Margaret. Good pair. Fast start. Number 23 on the offense. Five yard penalty. First down. So Golden Tate called for the false start, the first penalty of the game. Today's officiating crew is from the Big East, headed by Dennis Hennigan. That wasn't terribly close, was it? No. Yeah, you know, hey, Dave Wonstead was saying to us this week, he said, hey, you know, with Jimmy Clausen, what we want to try to do is make him hold that ball. You know, four, you mentioned the, the, the good pass rush. They're four down linemen. They've got 21 sacks on the year, the defensive team. They average three a game, 10 different players, but rush with four, cover with seven, and make him hold the ball. First and 15, and Clausen in the pocket, rifles it complete. Golden Tate wrestled out of bounds. They'll be short of the first down. Ricky Gary covered him, a gain of 12. They'll be three yards short. Okay, last year, the Irish didn't have this kind of dimension with Golden Tate and Michael Floyd. And think about it, Golden Tate was just really be making that transition from a high school running back to a wide receiver. You see the good protection, good throwing lane for Jimmy Clausen to get that ball to Tate. But, but Tate is much more comfortable, and he's a complete wide receiver and a double Tom. Lawson identifying the middle linebacker. And we'll hand it off to Allen. Armando Allen breaking free and caught from behind. Dropped inside the 25 by Scott McKillop. But a gain of 15 yards and another Irish first down. I'll tell you, Pittsburgh playing a little bit different def defensively than they normally do. That's a too deep zone for them. Ordinarily, they have uh, play a little man for man on the outside. But because of the wide receivers, they're playing too deep. And that allows your running back to get past the initial defend defender a lot of running room. Armando Allen, you saw him studying his wristband there for the play call. And you see how the, these guys are, are deep in the secondary. And you're going to usually see the ball thrown the tight end or runs. Lawson might be changing the play here. And then identifies the middle linebacker as he makes his protection calls. Hand off, Allen. Up the middle for a short game. Ball shared in on the tackle for Pitt as Coach Charlie Weiss, noting that his team showed much more confidence, more confidence, he said, than in the past three seasons. And, you know, it's not one of those, that, that false sense of confidence. Yeah. You know, they've actually done it. They've performed well when they've had to. But their first real good test at home, I think, Tom, Pittsburgh is the best team they've played at home in a long time. Blitz comes from Pitt. Clawson rifles it complete. Camara, short gain on the play as Pitt brought the pressure, and Clawson had to unload early to Camara, and Aaron Barry made the Pitt tackle. Good tackle by Barry because this was a play they ran for a touchdown last week to Michael Floyd. In that opening drive, Floyd went 51 yards, same kind of screen, but Aaron Barry, a terrific open field tackle by Aaron. Sets up a third down and eight. Ball at the 21 of the Panthers. Five defensive backs for Pitt. Elijah Fields joining the backfield. Here's Kamara in motion. Clawson from the gun. Across the middle, incomplete. Behind Kamara. Brings up a fourth down. And, of course, the kicking woes of the Irish have been well documented. However, Brandon Walker, his field goal kicker, has hit three in a row and will come on to the field. For the season, he is now four of ten in field goals and nine of 20 in his career. This will be a 39-yard attempt. And Pittsburgh has blocked six kicks this year. Two of them field goals. Walker puts it up and through. So Brandon Walker extends his string to four in a row. Perhaps he's gaining confidence as well. Irish take the opening kick, march down, settle for the field goal. And they go up 3-0 on Pittsburgh. And Notre Dame goes up 3-0. Let's take a look at our sprint scoring drive on the Notre Dame field goal drive. As Walker kicks it through from 39 yards out. Jimmy Clausen hit three of four on the drive, although missed on a third and long that would have kept the drive going. So Ryan Burkhardt will kick off for Notre Dame. And LaRod Stevens howling is the deep man for Pitt. A good return, good dangerous return man is Stevens howling. Burkhardt puts his toe to it. And Stevens howling from the seventh. 
breaks free for a moment. He then swarmed under Ray Herring led the charge just across the 25-yard line. As we take a look at our starting lineups for the pit offense, brought to you by Adidas, ninth career start for Bostic. The other eight came last year. Sean McCoy, he's the man to watch. 14 touchdowns this season. Leads the U.S. in scoring at 12 points a game. C.J. Davis gets the start at center. Hasn't played center since a freshman in high school. But because Rob Hauser is out, he starts at center instead of guard. So Pat Bostic, the quarterback. A new quarterback and a new center. And a flinch by the right guard, John Malecki. Will cost the Panthers five before they get a playoff. Four in the offense, five yard penalty, first down. There's Bill Stahl, the quarterback who suffered a concussion, the loss against Rutgers a week ago. Cleared for the doctors to play and did practice this week, starting from midweek, but Bostic gets the call today. You know, Bostic was the quarterback in their big win against West Virginia at the end of last season. So he's played on the road and played well on the road. In hostile territory. Indeed, <laughs> indeed. Because the playing in Morgantown yeah. can be hostile environs for sure. Backyard brawl, they call it. McCoy wrapped up as he made a cut by Maurice Crum, the that, leader of the Irish defense. Yeah, that's a matchup, Maurice Crum against LaShawn McCoy today. Pat Coons with three sacks leads the team up front. Our Adidas Notre Dame defensive starting lineups. Harrison Smith, two sacks last week against the Huskies. AC has got it going, doesn't yeah. he? And uh, in the secondary, McCarthy, three games with ten tackles or more. He leads the Irish with 61 tackles on the season. Well, Maurice Crum made a nice tackle a moment ago. And yesterday he said, you really got to take the tackle to LaShawn McCoy. You can't wait for him. He didn't wait that time. Hit no. him in the backfield and brought him down. Here's McCoy again, trying to get the corner and knocked out of bounds. And the Irish defense appears to be ready for McCoy. Rayshon McNeil makes that stop. And uh, the Irish first team defense coming off quite an impressive performance against the Huskies. Yeah, how about this? This is what the first team defense did. This 38 only allowed 55 yards on 38 plays, four first down, had four sacks. And Washington never got across the 50-yard uh, the line against the first team, and Corwin Brown defense really played their best game. Now yep. the pressure on Pat Bostic. Third down and 15. Bostic in the shotgun. Throws behind, incomplete, intended for Cedric McGee. And he looked a little rattled on that one as the Irish came with the pressure. Yeah, I'll tell you, even if he had completed that, Harrison Smith was yep. right there to make the play. It wasn't going for a first down. So uh, Stahl watches his teammate Bostic. Pressure comes. Five-man rush. One blitzer just thrown behind. You see number 22, Harrison Smith, kind of right there on the screen. A Golden Tate now uh, is their premier punt returner, their first-team punt returner. Again, a little bit of a change. Started that last week. Charlie Weiss trying to get a few more touches by Golden Tate. Dave Brightus has averaged nearly 42 yards a punt. That's a good one there. Tate, no fair catch, and he pays the price. Hit as soon as he fielded the ball, and then knocked on his back by Austin Ransom. The punt covered 45, no return. Irish take over, up three. Back at Notre Dame Stadium, and on the sideline, a couple of guys with perfect pitch. John Bon Jovi on the left, and Jeff Samarja on the right. The former Notre Dame receiver who now is a pitcher for the Chicago Cubs. And of course, John Bon Jovi would have to rank, I think, along with Bruce Springsteen as Coach Charlie oh, Weiss' without a doubt. favorite singer. Without a doubt. Jimmy Clausen, first down pass complete to Michael Floyd. And the freshman makes his first reception of the day right at the down marker. Knocked out of bounds by Aaron Berry. Michael Floyd is having the best season as a freshman receiver in the history of Notre Dame. And remember, that's a pretty good one. You remember Tim Brown, right? But tell you, you have to respect his deep uh, speed so much. These out patterns are just a given. You know, those are just gimmies. He's caught so many deep balls down the field. And boy, do you have to give a guy cushion and it allows you to, you know, catch hooks, catch outs. Big cushion that time for Michael Floyd. What kind of year you had, you saw on the graphic, that's his 32nd reception. Screen pass oh, dropped play. by Allen. Was it? Yeah, it was tipped by one tipped of the defensive down, yeah, linemen. Down, uh -huh. 
Or was it Mick Williams, I think, or one of the defensive players, number 95, Mick Williams, who tips this. Watch the hustle play by number 95. Yep. With left hand. And Mick Williams is a guy that a really good athlete. He's a defensive tackle, you said what he did. You said see what he did. High school was a running back, ran for 1,100 yards and returned two punts for touchdowns. So uh, still has some speed, even though he's a defensive lineman now. Also was an all-sectional basketball player at Monessen High School in Pennsylvania. Deep throw for Tate, streaking downfield and a little too long for him. Aaron Berry covering Golden Tate on the play. I remember we were talking to Aaron Berry this week about just this play. How are you going to defend the deep ball against Notre Dame, which has been so effective this year? And he said, first of all, is get good body position. That ball was overthrown, but get good body position, and then you really have to be strong at the reception point. You just can't let Golden Tate and Michael Floyd out jump you and take it away from you. They worked on it all week long. And he had good coverage there, the he junior did. from Harrisburg. And two deep safety coverage, now three deep, as you see. Take away that deep past the wide receiver's middle should be open. Clawson, third and long, chased from the pocket and throws it away. Heaves it over to the Notre Dame bench. Yeah, good, good defensive call by Phil Bennett, the defensive coordinator. You see that last guy, they went, they started at two deep, went to three deep. They were not going to let those outside receivers catch a first down play. And Jimmy Clawson's forced to throw it away. It's a good defense by the Panthers on that series, forcing the Notre Dame punt. First of the game by Eric Most, who has averaged 41.7 a punt this season. Most has had a real nice season. Nine punts inside the 20 as well. Oh, blocked. Blocked. That's the seventh block hit by the Panthers. Can't pick it up, can't scoop and score, as they say, but they will get it inside the 20-yard line. Well, it was number 44 who recovered it. Who recovered it. You could see who blocked it. That's Nate Nix who recovered the block. And right up the middle, catch that number. But you're right, you know, some teams just have a propensity uh, an ability. Think about uh, Virginia Tech for all those years, and now Pittsburgh under Dave Wanstead gets their seventh block of the year. Tristan Roberts tried to scoop and score, couldn't quite come up with it, but the Panthers take over after the blocked punt. First down at the Irish 20. Pass partially tipped and blocked. It was Kerry Neal that got a piece of it as Kevin Smith takes over at quarterback for the Panthers. His first pass partially deflected and incomplete. Kevin Smith, a 6'3", 225-pound sophomore from Cranberry Township, Pennsylvania. Good block by Kerry Neal, but Kevin Smith, a bit of a surprise to see, although he did start three games last year when Bill Stahl went out in the opening game. Smith played three, was ineffective, and that's when Pat Bostick got a start. That was his first pass attempt of the season, and it was blocked. Here's McCoy taking the direct snap from center and reaching the 15-yard line. It'll bring up third down for the Panthers. You know, it's that uh, that, that formation Arkansas ran so well. The Wildcat, the wild they call it, yeah. yeah. And this is the guy you, you'd love in this. Pretty good fake, good block. And he is hard to tackle in the open field, but a good tackle once again by Kyle McCarthy. And Lambert uh, wasn't faked out by him either, held yeah. his ground until McCarthy came to help. Yeah, so McCarthy, third down. McCarthy is one of the, the, the best short tacklers in the open field we've seen this year. He he's, leads the team for good reason. Third down play. And sacked. Kevin Smith pumped once, held the ball, and Steve Quinn takes him down. Well, Steve Quinn feeling he got the start ahead of Brian Smith today, who was a little ding last week. So a backup linebacker really known more for special teams, kind of fights off the block of LaShawn McCoy to make the sack on Kevin Smith. 12th sack of the year in the fifth the last two weeks by the Irish. So now Connor Lee is on to... Attempt the field goal from 35 yards to tie the game. He's hit 11 of 13, as long as 44. And the field goal attempt is up, and it is good. That's 42 of 50 in his career time. This guy is a scoring machine. That's the last time you saw a kicker on the, on the uh, cover of the football guy. He's hit 97 straight, point after touchdowns. No touchdown, but a 3-3 tie for one step. 
couple of ticks under six minutes left in the first quarter, and Pitt takes advantage of the block punt to score a field goal and tie the game. So already two quarterbacks used by the Panthers. As Luke Briggs has it teed up, ready to kick it off. Tate and Aldridge, the deep men for the Irish. Briggs sends it deep to Tate. Two yards deep, he's going to come out with it. Nowhere to go. Good coverage by the Panthers. Stopped at the 13-yard line. Jonathan Taglianetti, who made the blocked punt, makes that special teams tackle. Yeah, two in a row for Taglianetti. Here, here's Andrew Taglianetti right there. He comes off the corner, fights through some blocks. You know, Tom, some teams just have this knack. You mentioned the seventh block kick of the year for Pittsburgh. And the second by Taglianetti. Yeah, and, and then a special teams play the next play to back the Irish up. You know, they play 25% of the game, special teams. They don't get 25% of the credit. They should. Andrew Taglianetti with the block and the special teams tackle. Here's Aldrich twisted down by Greg Williams after a short game. So the Irish will have a second down and long. Today's first down line brought to you by Xerox. Jimmy Clausen, after that uh, four completions today, already has passed Joe Theismann to move into eighth place. All-time completions at Notre Dame. If he keeps that up, they're going to have to change the pronunciation of Jimmy's name. <laughs> to make it rhyme with Heisman? Somehow. From the shotgun. Give to Allen. And Armando Allen has a first down as the Irish fake the toss and hand to Allen for 10 yards and a first down. Yeah, that is, that's something we haven't seen. I mean, it's pretty good ball handling by Jimmy Clausen this week. A couple of nice little fakes. They throw some of those quick screens that looked like he was going to throw it out to his left, but then uh, Armando Allen just took the inside handoff, and he has become a much more decisive runner. Good block there by Trevor Robinson, one of those young players playing so well for the Irish. The guard. First down now at the Notre Dame 29. Blitz comes. Allen, short of the 35-yard line, stopped by Scott McKillop. Yeah, I suspect you're going to say, call Scott McKillop's name a lot. Number 40, right there, the middle linebacker, led the nation in tackles a year ago. He's got some very interesting tattoos, which are very appropriate around <laughs> Halloween. Loves spiders, he told us over the course of the week, this past week, and Spider-Man. No doubt that he was a Spider-Man on Halloween. Yeah, indeed. Came into the game with 274 career tackles. The fifth-year senior from Export, Pennsylvania. Not really Export. He actually lives in the country. <laughs> Export's his mailing address. Yeah, exactly. Two miles from Export, he said. Not sure how to get there. And flags will stop that. But he is one heck of a player. Fall McKillop. start, number 78 on the offense, five-yard penalty, second down. Freshman Trevor Robinson. We'll have a look at some of these tattoos of Scott McKillop. And the T-shirt yeah, as well. Yeah, indeed. That's the spider web. spider web on the uh, arm. And on the back is the Black Widow. You see that little red hourglass uh -huh, there? Yep. That's how you always know it's a Black Widow cut. <laughs> Yeah, I appreciate that. It, but, you know, he's one of those guys, he, he did look productive, but at the end of the game, you look up, he's got 12, 13, 14 tackles. Charlie's saying, take your time, take your time. Play action fake. Clawson standing in, now having a scramble. Nobody open. Good coverage downfield by the Panthers. He gets what he can out of it yeah. and gets back to the line of scrimmage, chased by Greg Romeus. That's what Dave wants, did once, right? Four-man rush. Put enough pressure on your quarterback, four-man rushing, seven-man seven man coverage, force Jimmy Clausen to hold the football. That's exactly the, their that, game plan. That was his prescription for success. success. And you can only do that if you have a good push in the inside and two good defensive ends, Charlie which Weiss, Pittsburgh does. Charlie Weiss, of course, knew Dave Wanstead when they were both in the NFL, and he said he was a heck of a defensive yeah. coordinator. I'll tell you, so he knows his defense. Which one is that was also head coach of the Bears and the Dolphins. Three-man rush this time. Eight and cover. Clawson across the middle to his running back, Allen. Catches under the defense, and that, too, was what Wonset yeah. wanted. Make him catch it underneath and make the tackle, and McKillop did. Take the, the, the wide receivers away. This time, three-man rush, eight-man drop. 
forcing it to throw underneath, hoping Allen's going to break a tackle, but a terrific tackle by Scott McKillop. Force a punt. Good defense. T.J. Porter is deep to accept the moused punt. Whoops. Off the side of uh, Moss's foot. And let's see where they mark it out of bounds. Moss missed that one. Eric Moss with a poor punt. It only covered 19 yards. Good field position for the Panthers when we come back. First day of November at Notre Dame Stadium as the Pitt Panthers and Fighting Irish have played to a 3-3 tie here in the first quarter. Tom Hammond, Pat Hayden, Alex Flanagan on hand. Nice weather today for the first of November. Very, very good football weather as the Panthers take over and the Rod Stevens Howling is in at running back, Pat Bostic. No, it is still Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith still at quarterback. And Smith shoots it down the sideline, but overleads his intended receiver, Jonathan Baldwin. And for more on that merry-go-round that has been the Pitt quarterbacks today, let's check in with Scooter. Alex? Hey, Tom. Well, I think a lot of people on the Pitt sideline were as surprised as we were when Kevin Smith went into the quarterback position. Pat Bostic is fine. He does not have an injury at all. But it kind of appears like Kevin Smith may be taking the reins for a while. The coaches are talking to him, advising him. I don't think we're going to see Bill Stahl. He has a baseball cap on, no helmet in sight, and he's been advising the two quarterbacks, Tom. All right, so here's Stevens howling, drawing a crowd of white, of uh, blue-shirted Notre Dame defenders right at the down marker. No gain on that play. It'll be third and long now for Kevin Smith. Well, you know, generally on those running downs, you're good because you're playing basically with your third quarterback. You're going to see a lot of blue jerseys, not only around the ball carry, but around the line of scrimmage time. Eight guys up for Notre Dame that time, forcing another third and long for the Panthers. Pitt is going to have to successfully throw the ball to have any chance here. And this is their leading receiver up here, Kinder, who hasn't had a ball thrown to him yet today. Kevin Smith from the shotgun. Throws it complete, but way short. The pass is caught by Cedric McGee. Hit immediately by Kyle McCarthy, and... Uh, Here's one of the pet peeves. You need you need 10 yards. Yeah, Why do you go three? three yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. The, the Irish have really taken LaShawn McCoy out of this game, right? Playing really good first and second down defense because they have eight guys up there stopping the run, forcing third and longs. That's why I say that they're going to have to throw the ball to loosen up Absolutely. that defense. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you don't, you, you don't throw it to win it, but you certainly throw it to loosen it up to give LaShawn McCoy a little room. Fourth down punt by Brightus. Tate, fair catch, 10-yard line, about the 11, actually, and he successfully makes it 38-yard punt. And don't forget that Notre Dame Saturday kicks off a half hour before every game with the Vonage Notre Dame countdown to kickoff with Paul Ferris and John Walters. Hear from both coaches, see highlights of the Notre Dame Friday night pep rally, and today's guests on the set, including the Irish basketball coach Mike Bray. There he is. The Vonage Notre Dame countdown to kickoff only on NBCSports.com. So with only 34 seconds left in the first quarter of a tie game, the Irish take over from their own 11-yard line. Three wide receivers set. Clawson in the shotgun. Actually, a four wide set. Clawson's pass on the slant to Michael Floyd and the freshman. See how strong he is, Tom? I mean, he caught that ball in about a five-yard game and then carried defenders for, for six more in a first. Took Barry and Greg Williams to get him down until he had 11 yards. First down, Irish. They're averaging over 17 yards a catch is Michael Floyd. Five touchdowns, more than more touchdown catches than any freshman receiver in Notre Dame history. 300-yard receiving games. His longest gainer has been 51 yards. Last week. Clawson again for Floyd. Catch again made. And again, a first down. Ricky Gary forced him out. Okay, a good read, good throw by Clawson, and then a really good route by Michael Floyd. Giving his quarterback enough room to still be able to throw the ball away from the fender and keep the ball on the field to play. You know, he may be just a freshman, but he really has savvy. Yeah. You've seen him twice now know where the first down marker was. Indeed. He, he's, he's never acted like a freshman, I'll say that. 
And that play to Michael Floyd will bring the first quarter to a close. 3-3 game will return to Notre Dame Stadium after these messages from your local NBC station. You're watching Notre Dame football on NBC presented by Sprint. There is a uh, shamrock balloon floating above uh, Notre Dame Stadium first day of November. 3-3 first quarter as we start the second. The winner becomes bowl eligible today. A lot at stake. Kyle Rudolph, the freshman tight end, with his first reception of the game. It goes for about six yards. Yeah, really only has caught one pass the last two games. That was a heck of a catch, an adjustment by Kyle Rudolph because Jimmy Clausen was under duress. You know, they're forcing, Pittsburgh is forcing Notre Dame to use the middle of the field because they're really trying to take away Michael Floyd and Golden Tate on the deep ball outside. Floyd's caught some short ones, but trying to avoid those deep balls they've thrown all year long. Rudolph, the freshman from Cincinnati, with a big contingent of fans here today, wearing his number nine jersey. As Armando Allen takes the pass and loses a yard on the play. When Charlie Weiss was talking to us about Kyle Rudolph a couple of weeks ago, saying one of the hardest working freshmen he had ever been around. And, and a guy said, you know, he, he may make a mistake, but he doesn't make that same mistake again. Really, really thinking big things. He's got a big future for Kyle Rudolph here. Freshman from Cincinnati Elder High School, All-American there, had 11 touchdown receptions as a senior. Clawson holding, holding, firing, and it's broken up. Nice defensive play by Dom DeSico. Well, DeSico did a great play, and Kyle Rudolph had a great pass block that time for Jimmy Clawson, but the strong safety, DeSico, Perfectly timed, gets his left hand in or knocks it away from the receiver, David Grimes. Another good defensive series for the Panthers. And really, they, you know, they, when you have a good front four that can really bring some heat, you can play a lot of guys in coverage, and that's just what Pittsburgh is doing. So Moss had only a 19-yarder, actually 18 the last time, and had one blocked earlier. This time he does get it away to Porter. D.J. Porter. There's a block in the back flag that goes down on Mike Anello covering the punt. And Anello gets up off the ground what a surprise. and gets a piece of the tackle. <laughs> what a surprise. Well, that's 17 tackles for Mike Anello on special teams. 41-yard punt, 11 on the return, but a penalty upcoming against the Panthers. During the return, illegal block in the back. Number four on the return team, 10-yard penalty. First down. Elijah Fields. So the Irish will take over with 13.35 left in the second quarter. 3-3 game. MetLife is navigating the skies of South Bend to provide aerial coverage of all the football action today. MetLife guarantees for the ifs in life. Steve Quinn still in at linebacker for Brian Smith. We thought we might see Brian Smith in the first half of the game. Pat Bostic back at quarterback for Pittsburgh, who had only two yards rushing and no yards passing in the first quarter. That one caught by the tight end John Pelusi, but he only gained a yard or so. David Bruton hit him. Yeah, you don't, have, you know, you don't have to win the game as the quarterback. But as uh, Dave Wanstead said to Alex before the game, you know, you just have to manage the game. But you got to complete a few yeah. to give your real weapon, LaShawn McCoy, a chance. He only has five yards to McCoy on three carries. And a one-yard reception is not going to loosen no. anybody up. No, you're right. You're right. There are the total yards. And the passing yards and time of possession heavily in favor of the Irish. Yet it's a 3-3 game. This is the fourth possession for Pitt. They still do not have a first down. Here's penalty. McCoy. Flag is down. And yeah, somebody looked on the offensive line, moved early. Ian Williams made the tackle oh. of McCoy. False start. Number 56 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Right tackle Joe Thomas with a false start. Big easy start. one to call. <laughs> one of the guys we mentioned that C.J. Davis, number 55, getting his first start since he was a, in high school at center for the Panthers. Interesting guy. We talked to him this week. Going to vote. Not even going to vote Tuesday. He told us he was going to work in a polling yeah. place on Tuesday as part of a class. Taking it very seriously. 
Second down and 14 now for the Panthers from their own eight. Irish show blitz. McCoy. Stretching it to the outside and making a nice cut up the sideline with David Bruton chasing him out finally. You, you could see I it. I couldn't understand how he no, got anything yeah, he out of that. It looked like he ran through about four blue jerseys. This guy is just really, really quick. And, and you can see how he bounces and hops and he can run through tackles. And as I said, he can get you four tough yards, but he can go 40 in a second, too. Almost looks like he's running at a different speed than everybody else. Bruton did prevent the pickup of the first down, makes it third down now in less than a yard. McCoy, the tailback in the eye. Conbridge Collins is the fullback. Collins has it to the 25-yard line and a pit first down, their initial first down of the game. And nice change of pace by Matt Cavanaugh, the offensive coordinator. Everybody, including myself, expected LaShawn McCoy to get it. What do you do? You give it to a little, a little counter to Collins, the fullback, who, by the way, in high school was a heck of a running back himself. There's Matt Cavanaugh, 1976 National Championship quarterback for the Panthers. Conrad Collins uh, at Monsignor Edwin Pace High School in the Miami area. Gained 1,328 yards, scored 21 touchdowns as a senior. We're right again, second time this season. <laughs> well, it's only my eighth game, thanks. <laughs> Pass complete in traffic and then dropped. Incomplete. Jonathan Baldwin couldn't hold on. As you can see, they're not stretching the field at all. I mean, they're not forcing the the uh, Irish defense to defend. You know, the, the length and the width of the field at all. Two men right around him. No chance on that one. Lambert, the first to hit him. Behind him too. Baldwin, yep. a guy who's had two long touchdown catches for the Panthers this year. One of 60, one of 52 yards. A little hasty. Looking in at the huddle. Getting ready to make a play. Second down and 10. We see right down here, a guy who had a really big game last week. That's Harrison Smith. Collins, the fullback, lined up in the slot and went in motion. Pass off the hands, tip ball. Did he catch it on the rebound? Can't tell. It will be <laughs> a completion to Baldwin. <laughs> Baldwin saw it go off his hands into the hands of an Irish defender, back out and into Baldwin's for 21 yards. Well, that's two catches for Jonathan Baldwin. <laughs> you think he gets credit for <laughs> he gets two? Credit. Well, maybe it looked like a volleyball play first. I tell you, uh, Baldwin does a great job of staying alive. I mean, I think he was just trying to prevent the interception. Time. Well, and that's where that 6'5 height comes into play yeah. here, too, as he is able to get it away from Lambert, who's only 5'11". Just staying alive. And, uh, you know, you keep hustling, keep hustling. Good things happen. They certainly did for Jonathan Baldwin right there. Finally got a big play in the passing game, although unconventionally. And off McCoy. McCoy goes one-on-one. -on -one. And takes it close to the 40-yard line. A gain of 12 before David Bruton's able to get him to the turf. You see the speed, you see the quickness, you see the vision and his ability to cut. Good block by the wide receiver, Porter. How would you like to tackle him, Tom? Robert nope. Blanton didn't there. Be no shot. Bruton yeah. lost his helmet <laughs> as he made the hit. <laughs> You're right. Okay, now, now he's starting to get into the You complete a pass or two, and then you give the ball to LaShawn McCoy. That's a good combination. Now the uh, Panthers have the offense working into Irish territory here. First down. McCoy takes the direct snap. And he gets about nine yards. And this is the second really good runner the Irish defense have seen this year. Remember Javon Ringer from Michigan State ran for over 200 yards against him. There's that power play they like, pulling guard just right up the gut. Dominic Williams pulling in that play, getting a good block by Malecki and Thomas. And just give him a little crease, and LaShawn McCoy is going to pick up a lot of first downs. There's McCoy on the sideline. Stevens howling, replaces him. And they give it on the uh, end around kind of deal to Andre Wright. Was it Wright that uh, carried? Yeah, it was yeah. Andre Wright, a wide receiver who went in motion. and it didn't uh, work. He it, lost four yards. Work. Kind of a strange call on second and one. And particularly when you're pounding it up the middle in that uh, direct snap to the running back. But I tell you, Harrison Smith makes a lot of good plays. Came off a block to do yeah. that. And then Charlie Weiss was saying early, early in the year, he said, this guy is very productive, and he certainly is. 
Crucial play here on third down and five. We'll call a timeout with Pittsburgh. So Dave Wonstadt wants to have Pat Bostic over the sideline to talk with offensive coordinator Matt Cavanaugh. It'll be Pittsburgh facing a crucial third down when we return. Charlie White's Dave Wonstadt are waiting a big third down play. Pitt has picked up three first downs on this drive after going the first quarter plus without a first down. But now third down and five from the 37-yard line of Notre Dame. Collins and McCoy behind Pat Bostic. McCoy has some room and pounds oh, straight ahead. There's his power as well as his uh, yeah. elusiveness as he picks up the first down. He, he was going to be, what, two, maybe three yards short of that? I mean, again, just an absolutely determined run, particularly watch the, the second effort in the last two or three yards because he would have been short right there by two yards to see the yellow line. And he keeps turning and churning, and th that's what makes him, I think, unique. He, you know, he can give you a flash and go 40 yards, but when you need two or three tough yards, he can get you that, that as well. Big third down conversion by the Panthers. Their fourth first down on this drive keeps it going. First and 10 at the Irish 31. McCoy on a counter play, dropped by the ankles by Maurice Crum, or he might have had a score. Is he quick through that hole? And that's a good tackle by Maurice Crum. And, in fact, uh, uh, wasn't Maurice saying to us that you see a lot of guys elusive in the open field, but he's elusive in the hole. Yeah, he said you see a lot of guys right there in the in the hole that he makes you miss. And he said, you know, he said to us yesterday, you've got to take the, the tackle to him. You just can't wait on him. 19 yards after contact and after kind of just really being denied much uh, in the first quarter, really come on here in the second. Second down and five from the eye. McCoy, nowhere to go, surrounded, and taken down for a loss. Back to the 35-yard line by Kyle McCarthy. And that's a bad decision by LaShawn McCoy. And that's what Dave Wonstadt was saying to us early in the year, that LaShawn McCoy, when he, the first three games of the year, when he didn't go over 100 yards, he was trying to make every run a home run. He slipped early in the run, but sometimes you just got to hang there with the box, stay in the hole, and take two yards. And now he puts his team in a really tough spot. They were in field goal range. Now it's third and 14, really out of field goal range. Back at the 35-yard line. Bostic trips and falls as he comes away from center. All the way back to the 40, now definitely out of a field goal range. He lost five yards. A lot of times the center yeah. dropping to for pass blocking will step on the quarterback's foot. Yeah, and remember, we, we, we talked about it being a new center. There, there's the center, uh, Davis, right there. That's and what it, he did. Yeah, it was the right foot of C.J. Davis. We mentioned it, you know, first start at center since high school. So it's David Grimes now deep to receive the punt by Brightus, who will try to pooch it as they'll try to down it inside the 10. And a real missed opportunity for the Panthers. They were in field goal range until the ill-advised decision by LaShawn McCoy to try to break it. Pooches it, but off the side of his foot. But it takes a good pit bounce. Nice hook on that yeah. kick. <laughs> good pit bounce down at the eight-yard line, a punt of 31, which pins the Irish yeah. deep. No Again. style points, but it worked. 3-3 yeah. three, three game. Another four peel, field position start for the Irish. Their average starting point, their own 16. This time they begin from their own nine. And the handoff to Robert Hughes. Hughes with his first carry of the game gets a couple of yards. Charlie Weiss was saying, you know, they use their three running backs a little bit differently. Armando Allen's kind of the lead guy. Robert Hughes in their spread offense is the backup guy. And then James Aldridge is their short yardage power back. And Hughes the backup in short yardage as well. Clock ticking down inside 540. 3-3 first half. You see the rushing yards and the passing yards. Second down and long, and Jimmy Clausen has his freshman Floyd 
Goes downstairs to make the catch just off the turf for 12 yards. That'll move the chains. You know, it's interesting to watch the Irish. I mean, they're they're forcing them to throw the ball to Michael Floyd short on these out routes. And, you know, they're taking advantage of it. You know, Pittsburgh's saying, you're not going to run by me. That's okay, Notre Dame's saying. We'll go back and throw outs. And what's I think it's a third out route that Michael Floyd has caught. And it takes a quarterback with a strong arm to be able to make that throw. And the patience Indeed. to take what the defense is giving you. Four catches now for Floyd for a total of 47 yards. Fake. Clawson scrambling and then tosses it in traffic. Lucky he got away with that one. Well, I'll tell you, Jimmy Clawson took a shot by Greg Romius as well. Who after that play. Mm. One thing about Jimmy Clawson, he's tough. And Charlie Weiss knows he's tough. He's told us that in the past. Watch the, watch the hit as Jimmy Clawson gets rid of this ball by number nine, 91, Greg Romius. Really got twisted and turned. I think he might have kind of ducked under it a bit, though. Let's see if we look closer. No, uh, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe not. But I think the, the, the coaching staff and players all know after last year how tough Jimmy Clausen is. Second down and 10. Hughes broke one tackle at the line of scrimmage and tackled then at the 30 yard line. Monday night, it's the last new SNL political special before the election. The Saturday Night Live Election Eve Bash, Monday at 9, 8 Central, here on NBC. It's kind of encouraging. They've had a field day, haven't they, with they this have. election? You yeah, have. It's kind of encouraging to me. We talked to a bunch of players, both on Pittsburgh yeah. and Notre Dame, uh, most of whom said they were going to vote. All the Pittsburgh players told us they were going to get to the polls on Tuesday after practice. David Bruton of the Irish has a studied the election time in out. depth for two political Notre science Dame. classes he's taking this turn. The Irish spend their first time out of this first half. It comes with 424 on the clock, and the scoreboard showing a 3-3 tie with Pitt. Is that kind of the way your head feels sometimes? <laughs> yeah, I'll with a night out with you, yes. <laughs> Big third down coming up for the Irish right here. Third down and two. Ball at the 30-yard line of Notre Dame. Clawson handing off. And a first down run by Armando Allen with a flag coming in late. Austin Ransom made the tackle after a 10-yard gain. Holding, number nine on the offense, 10-yard penalty, third down. Kyle Rudolph called for the hold, nullifying a crucial third down run. Yeah, Kyle Rudolph, just number nine right there. And tell you, they had a big gaping hole. Yep, there's a takedown by Rudolph. I'll tell you, Sam Young kind of really hammered his guy inside, made a nice block. So that was uh, really a critical penalty for the Irish with four, just over four minutes left in the half. So now it's third down and about 12. In two deep zone, trying to take away the wide receivers. Blitz. Clawson going deep. And caught oh. the rebound <laughs> by Jordan Tate. I tell you, you we, know. We talked about how strong his hands were. Yesterday we talked to him about that. And, you know, you talk to all defensive coordinators, they say even when you have him covered, and, folks, Golden Tate was covered, but not only Aaron Berry, but the Dom the CEO as well, the strong safety over the top. Basically double coverage. Oh. And he just stayed with it, just like Baldwin from Pittsburgh yep. did a little while earlier. Great play by Golden Tate. His 11th catch of over 30 yards this season. Yeah, he had really strong hands and, and, and attention to detail. Yeah, and what great reaction, too, just being able to see that. Robert Hughes hopped on behind the line of scrimmage by Mick Williams. Williams just kind of rode him down from his back. If you were a quarterback, Tom, wouldn't you love it if your receiver made a play like that? Yeah. <laughs> offensive coordinator Mike Haywood likes it. That was, it was, Mike didn't design it that way, I promise you. But it, uh, Golden Day just stayed with it. It's so close for the pit defense of making a crucial play. He was talking to us yesterday, the center fielder on the baseball team, saying that at least on the kick return, that, that, that 
helps him judge yeah. the flight of the ball, and maybe that came into play there as well on the tip. Look at that snag of the fingertips. Fourth out route by Michael Floyd. Michael Floyd. Phil Bennett's yards. Gonna, and Phil Bennett, the defensive coordinator, is going to have to make adjustment because those out routes have just been too easy for the Irish. Great throws by Jimmy Clausen as well. I think he had possession and a foot down before yep. that second foot went out of bounds. He's caught passes of 11, 12, 12, 12, and 12. And has set the freshman record for the Irish. Already set it for touchdowns with five this season. James Aldridge inside the 20-yard line. Irish will have a second down. Trying to gain that yellow line. Today's first down line brought to you by Xerox. And Tom, what a lift it would be for the Irish to be able to go into halftime with the lead really after the catch, because of the catch, of Golden Tate. Golden Tate, it's second down and seven. Here's Barry Gallup Jr. in the backfield at Taylor. No, excuse me, it's Aldridge. Play action fake and Clausen's for the end zone. Floyd's open, he has it. Touchdown. It looked like Aaron Berry, the defensive back, fell down. There's the catch, the foot in, has possession, that's a touch. 18 yards, Michael Floyd. Sixth touchdown catch of the year to extend that freshman record. And boy, was he open, and as I said, it looked like the guy covering him, Berry, just slipped and fell. And they're going to review it. There isn't much doubt in my mind looking at that. Here's number 17, Barry, who had a tough week last week against, yeah, he just got turned around and fell. Just got turned around. Looked like that's, clearly that's, he had a foot yeah, down. That's a touchdown. Nick Trainer and John Spencer of the Big East, the replay officials. You know, and, and a nice play call by Mike Haywood. You know, out route, out route, out route, out route, post. And did you see how he turned Barry around? And, and you know, it's Barry in the other corner been beaten so badly on the outs. You have to respect that. He fakes running out, comes inside, is wide open. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The receiver had possession of the ball with one foot down in bounds. Touchdown. Jimmy Clausen celebrating his 16th touchdown pass of the season. Get to relax against this Panther special teams, though, because we said Greg Romeus, number 91, has blocked three extra points. Brandon Walker has not missed an extra point this season. 25 of 25 if he makes this one. And he does. Nice drive by the Irish, which began at their own nine-yard line. Now let's go to Jimmy Roberts in our New York studio for a sprint game break. All right, Tom, we head to the Metrodome for this sprint game break. Northwestern and Minnesota all tied. 20 seconds, 26 seconds left. Adam Weber looking, throwing, now regretting. Brendan Smith picks it off in the middle of the field, then moves outside. Nice little cut inside before it was all over. This would be a pick six. The Wildcats win without running back Terrell Sutton or quarterback C.J. Bache. A big win after the surprising loss to Indiana. Tom? Wow, that's a nice win. I know, losing to the Hoosiers and then coming back, the uh, Wildcats at 7-2. and two. Winner of this game uh, today between Pitt and Notre Dame will go to 6-2 and two and reach that bowl-eligible sixth victory as you look at some other ones. The Hoosiers losing to the Chippewas today. Boy, Virginia had been playing well. Yeah, they had. Miami. Ole Miss, Auburn just isn't the same wow. team. They've had all kinds of problems. The high-scoring Golden Hurricane yeah. trailing... The Razorbacks, some uh, surprising scores coming your way. Alabama taking care of business against Arkansas State. The Rod Stevens howling deep man for the Burkhart kickoff. Stevens howling sees it bounce into the end zone. He'll down it there for the touchback. 
Well, coming up, it'll be the Mercedes-Benz Notre Dame Halftime Show. Jimmy Roberts and Peter King in our New York studio. And Alex Flanagan has a very special look at what Charlie Weiss and his wife, Maura, are doing for their 13-year-old daughter, Anna, who suffers from global developmental delays. They built a farm here in South Bend for people with special needs. Alex, it's a touching story. It sure is, uh, Tom. And, you know, if you think you know Charlie Weiss, you don't know him until you know something about his daughter, Hannah. She has really given Charlie perspective on the football field and in life in general. He and his wife, Maura, have done a lot uh, to promote Hannah and to help other families and kids of special needs. And I got to spend some time with them, and we'll show you more of that, uh, Tom, coming up at half. Okay, here's a first down handoff to McCoy for the Panthers. And McCoy has uh, nearly nine yards before he's tackled by David Bruton. You know, Tom, when Charlie was talking to us yesterday, you know, he's been on the President's Commission for People with Intellectual Disabilities. He's really proud of that. And his commission's main thrust is to find companies to hire people with intellectual uh, disabilities. And this is really near and dear to Charlie's heart. I think he uh, loves his family and loves football. Don't want to miss that feature on the Mercedes-Benz Notre Dame Halftime Show. Darren Dickerson makes the reception for Pitt. Tell you one thing Pitt's going to have to figure out is a way to get some completions down the field. They've only, you know, 26 passing yards in the first half, Tom. And uh, that is just putting too much on the Sean McCoy. The defense has played well enough. The special teams have played well enough. But then you get something going in the passing game. Face with the blitz. Bostic throws the interception. Picked off by Rayshon McNeil. McNeil still on his feet looking for blockers. A lot of blue shirts in front of him. Still going. Here's McNeil bursting free. McNeil lost it. Fumble, but picked up by the Irish. Picked up by David Bruton. Forty-three yards on the return. Bruton recovered the fumble by McNeil after McNeil had his first interception of the season. Well, you've seen the difference in play of the two quarterbacks. Just a very poor throw that time by Bostic, an easy interception by McNeil. And then he looked like he was probably a pretty good high school running back, Tom. Just kind of picking his way, weaving. And, and then uh, the, the Pittsburgh, I think it was Kinder, or somebody comes up and strips him of the ball. And uh, it's reliable David Bruton who makes the recovery. David Bruton always seems to be around the ball at the yep. appropriate time, didn't he? So a key recovery in Bostic's pass way too tall, yeah. right into the arms of the waiting McNeil. Rayshon McNeil, we talked to him a couple weeks ago. He says, uh, youngest of three kids, the first kid ever to graduate in, from high school in his family, and his mom and grandmother are most proud of that. McNeil, who actually came as an architect major, has transferred to uh, industrial design since then. Really, really good student. Over a four-point in high school, 3.5 at Notre Dame. So now just 30 seconds left as the Irish have the ball on the 13 of the Panthers. And just when you thought it was getting, you know, easy, you got Tate down here and you got Floyd down here. Boston fade route. Receiver fell down. It was Golden Tate. Isn't that interesting that Charlie Weiss goes right back to try to pick on Aaron Berry again, number 17. He was burned by the touchdown for the touchdown a moment ago. A little inside move, good coverage. Actually, actually could have been offensive. Yeah, Tate was pushing yeah. off as he yeah, fell down. It looked like he did push off. Red zone offense, last four games, have not turned the ball over, scored 10 touchdowns, and complete turnaround since those first three games. 26 seconds, second down and 10. Fake to Aldridge. Here's Clawson. Scrambling. Throws it up for grabs. And it nearly was grabbed. There's a penalty marker down. And a late hit, late shot on Jimmy Clawson. Easy one to call. He threw that one into a crowd. He's lucky it wasn't picked off. Yeah, he's lucky he got up, too, yeah, I'll tell you that. After the hit. Personal, after the play was over, personal foul, number 26 on the defense. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. Ricky Gary with the late hit. Uh, just, you know, a poor decision on offense with the pass, and then a poor decision by Gary on the late hit on Jimmy Clausen. That's... That's a cheap shot. It's just, a, it's just a stupid penalty. Yep. And he gets... Uh, yeah, he should. It's a talking to from Dave Wanstead. So, 
Ball now at the six-yard line. Robert Hughes takes it inside the five. Yeah, good tackle by Javad Sheard because he was about to get the end zone, but Sheard, number 97, put the stop on him. Timeout Notre Dame. They'll have one left. Want Notre Dame updates whenever and wherever? Use NBC Sports Mobile and get them right on your cell phone. Just text the letters ND to 51515. Again, text ND to 51515. Well, 11 seconds left here in the first half. And the Irish trying to take advantage of that interception. It would be huge in this game if they can put some points on the board. Absolutely. You know, Pittsburgh has played relatively well defensively, but it was a poor throw yep. by Bostick and then a, you know, poor decision on the, on the penalty. I mean, and so those two plays may be the difference in this first half. Wanstead trying to rally his defense here for the final seconds. Notre Dame will have one timeout left. Ball at the four-yard line of the Panthers. I'll tell you, a big height advantage right down here for about no, six inches height advantage for Michael Floyd. Lawson puts it up there for Floyd. <laughs> kind of a hand fighting with the yeah. defender all the way into the corner of the end zone. Nothing there on that one. Yeah, you know the defender to Chappelle did a great job. I, I think he was worried about that height disadvantage. But Jimmy Clawson has to keep that ball in the yeah, field of play, right? That one was not catchable anyway. Yeah. So, so you got to keep it in the field of play. Chappelle uh, holding his own with Floyd. And eight seconds remain in the first half. Third down. Yeah, another guy who's a guy to watch is, is Rudolph. You know, at 6'7", a tight end. It just such a big target in the middle of the field. He's, gonna He's blocking, yeah. yeah. As the toss goes to Floyd for the touchdown. And Michael Floyd with his second touchdown reception of this first half comes with four seconds left. And how about the sequencing of plays? You know, the fade doesn't work. It's well covered. So what do you do? You do a fade stop, a little out, boom, it's wide open. Good block on the inside by Chris Stewart allows him to get that ball off. You know, Lawson, they were going to take away the fade. But Lawson that, that kind of has to uh, sidearm it there yeah. a little bit to uh, get it past the defense. Yeah, that thing had some mustard on it, well ketchup done. and relish and everything else. That thing was drilled to Michael Floyd. Seven receptions, 81 yards, two touchdowns for freshman Michael Floyd here in the first half. Well, it yes. looked like it might be a 3-3 ball game, you know, going into halftime. Here's a review underway. So he caught it. He was in the end zone. Put down Good in the end down. zone. Possession. Yeah, that's a touch. The ruling on the field is confirmed. The receiver had possession with a foot down in the end zone. Touchdown. Just making sure, Pat. Mm -hmm. Not a bad idea, right? Right. Well, the touchdown set up by the interception return of 43 yards by McNeil. The fumble recovery by Bruton. And they get the touchdown, and now the extra point attempt by Walker. On its way, and splits the uprights with it. Big, big touchdown by Floyd just before halftime as the Irish take advantage of the turnover. Well, Tom, you mentioned all set up by the interception by McNeil. Poorly thrown ball by Bostic. And by the good return as yeah, well. Yeah, terrific return. You know, didn't go down easily. And then, you know, if your, if your team hustles because he ends up fumbling, and he got the hustle play by David Bruton, leads to this play. Sequencing the play is so important. They try to fade that was unsuccessful the play before. Then a little stop on that route for the touchdown. And a very happy, what used to be offensive coordinator, Charlie Weiss. <laughs> Well, what a weapon that freshman. We know freshman. He's has never been. played like a freshman. He is in uh, academic years, but not on the football <laughs> field, right? Not in savvy, for yeah. sure. And not in size either, as he uses that six foot three frame to good advantage. 
I think as a freshman in, in the NCAA is averaging more yards per catch than he, at least coming into the game, averaging over 17 yards a catch. Burkhart squibs it. Taken by one of the up men, Collins. And Collins tackled and no flags. That will bring the first half to a close. A first half that ended with the Irish getting the interception and the touchdown with four seconds left to push their advantage to 14 points. And a tough sequence of events for Dave Wanstad and Pittsburgh got the tip ball for the big play that uh, led to a touchdown and then to the interception leading to a touchdown just before halftime scored by Notre Dame. Pat Coons and the <laughs> Irish. Jimmy Clawson with a couple of touchdown passes, and Alex is with Coach Charlie Weiss. Coach, how much of a difference maker was that interception in the first half? Well, I'd say with the, the difference maker was us getting a little lucky on that tip ball right there with a 3-3 game, and then, you know, got to go to up to 10-3. And they were trying to force the ball down the field some, and Ray Shaw made a heck of a play, and, you know, we were fortunate to capitalize there right before halftime. You guys have been able to contain their running back, McCoy, for most of the game. What has he been able to do when he has found those open holes? Well, what, when he's made, he, you know, he made yardage on a draw and, he, and a bounce out run to the right. But for the most part, the defense has been, done a nice job of, you know, keeping him under wraps. All right, Charlie, thank you. Tom, back up to you. All right, Alex. The words of Charlie Weiss at halftime. Hip team leading Pitt 17 to 3. Plenty ahead now, Jimmy Roberts and Peter King in our New York studio. The halftime performances of the Notre Dame and Pitt fans can be seen at NBCSports.com. Now it's time for the Mercedes-Benz Notre Dame halftime show. Let's go to Jimmy Roberts. With our producer, David Gibson, our director, John Gonzalez, Tom Hammond, Pat Hayden, Alex Flanagan, ready for the second half at sold-out Notre Dame Stadium. Jimmy Clawson is the... Notre Dame quarterback, and who will it be for the Panthers in the second half? We're about to find that out. Here are sprint first half stats. Boy, remember you just said the uh, 28 passing yards by Pittsburgh. That, that's that's going to have to improve, right? Were those uh, five first downs all on one drive? They yeah. Were, yeah, I think they were. Well, you know, Pittsburgh gets the ball to begin this half. This would be a great opportunity to have a nice drive to get right back in the ball game because that guy, Jimmy Clausen, big first half, two touchdowns, 173 yards just uh, continues to improve does Jimmy Clausen and continues to uh, march up the Notre Dame career completions list will be five before the end of the day he's passed uh, Joe Theismann and Blair Keel today now with 301 and Terry Hanratty is next just three away Stevens Halling takes the Burkhardt kickoff and has a nice return up the middle to the 30 yard line let's check in with Alex Hey, Tom, well, Pat Bostick is going in for Pittsburgh at quarterback. I talked to Dave Wanstead at the half a little bit about why he put Kevin Smith in so early in this game. He said that he thought that Smith could do certain things better than Pat would, and he said he wanted to play to his quarterback strengths, but he did tell me that we should see Pat Bostick for most of the second half, if not all of it. And there is Pat Alex out to the, uh, into the Pittsburgh huddle. So... Smith, number 12, remains on the sideline, as does Bill Stoll, who had been the starter before suffering the concussion a week ago. 29-yard line where Pitt begins the first play from scrimmage of the second half. It's a handoff to McCoy. Dodged a man in the backfield, but a short game before he's driven back by the center of the Irish defense. You know, we said at the top of the show the Irish played so well against Washington last week on defense. Well, they continue that against a pretty good Pittsburgh team, as we said, an interception, four tackles for loss, two pass breakups, a sack, and Maurice Crum, who's matched up against LaShawn McCoy, had a good first half, five tackles for Maurice Crum right there. Rome in the middle for the Irish. Empty backfield here for Pitt on second down and seven. Blitz comes. There's a little Kyle McCarthy. Going on. He's, yeah. Kyle McCarthy was in the backfield almost quickly enough to get the handoff. Yeah, Corwin Brown, the defensive coordinator's nickname for McCarthy is Fido. He's like a dog. You just tell Fido where to go and tell Fido who to tackle. 
and Fido is going to do that, and, and Fido just kind of tackled LaShawn McCoy right there. I'm pretty sure he means it as a compliment. I'm sure he does. <laughs> well, you know, he, he lives in that place they call the kingdom. He was saying to us earlier, a lot of a lot of animal problems they have in the kingdom, too. So maybe that's why they call him Fido. Third down and seven. This time, McCoy lines up next to Bostick in the shotgun. Blitz. Bostic hit as he delivers, but he got it complete. Short gain, though, to Derek Kinder, and there's, again, Kyle McCarthy with a sure tackle, a late flag on the play. Another short tackle by Kyle McCarthy. He is just unreal in the open field. Gain way short of the first down, but let's check the penalty marker. Pittsburgh, one of the least penalized teams in the country. After the play is over, personal foul, number 22 on the defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. Whoops, it's on Harrison Smith. Oh, Hayseed. He'll be coming off the field right now. Doesn't want to either because he's going to hear it. <laughs> Get an earful. Yeah. Charlie Weiss right there says he'll probably be a strong safety for our free safety for him next year. He says he's going to have to lose some weight and cut his hair. That's what that was his instructions for. A couple of weeks ago in the bye week, uh, Harrison Smith along with uh, Jimmy Clausen and some others, Golden Tate was there, made a trip to uh, Knoxville. Smith's hometown to see uh, the Vols play a game at Neyland Stadium. McCoy! Nice run by LaShawn McCoy. Ten-yard gain before McCarthy makes the tackle. LaShawn McCoy. Just actually just short of yeah. ten yards and the first down. Okay, let's go back and look at the penalty on Harrison Smith. He's number 22 in the middle of the screen. He's right down here. There he is. Yeah. Yeah, that's an easy penalty. Right in front of the umpire. Well, they said he gets a little too keyed up sometimes. Yep. That, there was perfect example. Cost him. McCoy stood up and driven back at the line of scrimmage. I think I it was at, That's uh, Maurice Crum among others. Yeah, Maurice Crum and Kerry Neal and Ryan Smith in the game. Did not play in the first half, but there's number 58, Ryan Smith. And suffered a uh, his concussion last week against Washington, held out. There's Crum off the corner, and Smith and McCarthy to clean it up. Third and short. Third down and short. Here's the I formation. Collins is the fullback. McCoy the tailback. Two tight ends. Fake to McCoy. Bostic goes for the end zone, has a man wide open, and oh, missed him. Jonathan Baldwin that is, was absolutely <laughs> wide open, three steps behind the defense, and the pass not even close. Well, you know, at the end of the second quarter, he threw a bad pass, it was intercepted, led to a touchdown. There he has a touchdown to make up for it, and overthrows a completely open, great call by Matt Cavanaugh. You know, particularly when your quarterback hasn't really had a great day yet. But you see he's open by four or five steps. That maybe well, certainly gets the Panthers right back in the ball game. Big oh. missed opportunity. And now one of the best fourth down conversion teams in football will go for it on fourth and one. And it's going to be another pass. Bostic rifles it and it's caught. Turner racing to the five and wrestled out of bounds. I tell you, how about Chased the, down by Bruton. I tell you, uh, uh, LaShawn McCoy getting up slowly on the field. Well, how about the calls by Matt Cavanaugh, the offensive coordinator? Fourth and one, he goes for the home run, and then, or excuse me, third and one, and then fourth and one. When your quarterback has really been cold as ice <laughs> picking up the first down. Good block by McCoy that time. That's where he got hurt. Picks up the linebacker, Brian Smith. And then, and then Turner the, does the rest. Yeah, breaks the tackle, and on the way is Oderic Turner. But interesting and, and daring play calls by Matt Cavanaugh the last two plays. That one covered 37 yards. The passing yards total before that had been 32. Stevens Howling replacing McCoy at tailback. Gets the call, and he's in for the touchdown. Terrific opening drive by the Panthers to start the second half. And good play calling by Matt Cavanaugh. Execution. And then the penalty by Harrison Smith really gave him an extra 15. LaRod Stevens howling for the touchdown. Well, what a nice block by John Malecki, number 74, the right guard. Fifth rushing touchdown of the season for Stevens howling, the senior from Johnstown. 
Dave Wanstead said he may be the most underrated player in the Big East. He's talking about Stevens Howling. Connor Lee has hit 97 straight PATs. They get 98 in a row. So Pittsburgh, thanks to some uh, mistakes by Notre Dame, gets right back in the game. And uh, all the fall colors on the University of Notre Dame campus. MetLife is providing today's aerial coverage, and congratulations to MetLife as they celebrate their 140th year anniversary. Charlie Weiss and the Irish surrender a touchdown to the Panthers on the opening drive of the third quarter to narrow the lead to seven. That guy had a lot to do with it. Really, he picked up a, a blitz on fourth down to allow the conversion for a first down to keep the drive alive. So Luke Briggs will kick off to Golden Tate. Briggs has reached the end zone on his kickoffs and does again. Two yards deep. Tate brings it out. Uses one blocker. Gets to the sideline. Keeps his balance across the 35-yard line. Nice return by Golden Tate. Let's go back and look at uh, that last drive and really the mistake. The late penalty right there by Harrison Smith. That got him 15 yards. And then the big play was the fourth down play. Here's the blitzing linebacker. Here's McCoy. Watch him pick it up. And that un un allows his quarterback, Bostic, enough room. And then the missed tackle allows the receiver to go all the way down inside the 10-yard line. So Terrell, Terrell Lambert missed the tackle, which allowed him to go. And this yeah. all comes after Bostic had missed a wide-open Baldwin for what would have been a touchdown. Gotcha. Come right back on fourth down. He went the hard way. <laughs> and easy convert, way. yeah. Hand off to Allen. Oh. Nothing doing. Slam down in the backfield for a loss in the play by Greg Romius. Greg Romius is one of those rising stars in the Big East. We talked about him blocking three extra points. Great athlete, high school basketball star, and 4-6 speed off the edge. A lot of negative plays this year, three and a half sacks, six tackles for losses. But those long arms, he just, you know, he can block him for a while, and they can still get around the blocker to make a tackle. Puts the Irish in a hole now at second and 15. That pass to nobody. <laughs> nobody Golden was Tate, open. <laughs> Golden Tate was streaking downfield, and the pass, as Clawson was expecting an out, falls to the turf and sets up a third down in 15. It's amazing. We talked to Jimmy Clawson yesterday how well prepared and coached he is. You know, on Mondays, just by himself, he meets with Charlie Weiss. He threw that one to Charlie there, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, Charlie. Just, just the two of them talking about the game plan. Meets with them again just by themselves on Fridays. They look at all the play calls to get uh, the play passes during the course of the week. Third down and 15. Clawson under pressure sets up a screen. Caught by Allen. Allen. Oh, good tackle. Wide open in the open field. It was Andrew Taglianetti who yeah, blocked again. the punt earlier. And a great special teams play as well. Taglianetti having a nice little game for himself. Remember Charlie Weiss's very first game? It was against Pittsburgh that you mentioned. They really hurt Pittsburgh with the screen pass. And I remember uh, they completed four or five of them, but uh, not that time. As Tagli and Eddie makes a nice stop and forces a punt. Eric Most on to punt. Most sails it toward T.J. Porter. Porter says, "Get away with it!" And no, get away from it. And he fumbled it, but. I think it was a scramble for it. I think Pitt got it back. Elijah Fields was there to make the recovery, but I'll tell you, that, that was ill-advised, wasn't it? It was indeed. Elijah Fields was the man that saved Porter on that one. Porter tried to field it, looked away from it to look at the defense, and then Elijah Fields, number four. Bet you never played any shortstop. be better than a day at Notre Dame Stadium with your dad. Let's save it for posterity. What do you say? <laughs> That's great to see. It takes over, trailing now by seven. Second possession of the third quarter. And it's a first down Bostic pass, which is high and intercepted on the rebound by McNeil. Tipped by Baldwin, again off the hands of the 6'5", Baldwin. Yeah, if you throw it high to Baldwin, you're throwing it high. 
for the second time Boy. that a high pass has cost Bostic an interception. You know, and just when you know Pittsburgh climbs right back into this ball game to make it a one touchdown game, and it was a wide open receiver. Bostic just throwing it way too high. Wasn't rush. It was just a poor throw. Just two after Pitt on their first drive of the quarter had equaled their entire output offensively of the first half, 71 yards, and closed the gap to seven. So the turnover. Now the Irish hope they can take advantage. Pitt's throwing, showing blitz here on fourth down, so Clawson might be adjusting the play. Wow. Allen never had a chance. And that's what happened on the last drive, which was three and out for Notre Dame, was a first down loss of five. McKillop, Will, Mick Williams, Greg Williams. Yeah, watch uh, Greg Williams, number 38, come up to the outside. Really started that play off in bad, a bad play. But the turnover ratio for the Irish, when they have won games, they have really, you see when they win, they're plus six in their wins, and then minus seven in the losses. Two interceptions today by uh, Rayshon McNeil. Second straight series, though. They're second and 15, and that pass batted right back at Jimmy Clausen by Ricky Gary. Well, the Panther defense is playing pretty well. You know, their offense has really put them in a bind. They've not been dynamic in the passing game, and they've turned the ball over twice. But this Pitt defense, we said pretty good, well advertised as a good defensive team. They've lived up to that, I think. Eric Olson now out at left guard, replaced by freshman Trevor Robinson for Notre Dame. Don't lose much there. Trevor Robinson played a lot for the Irish this year and played well. There he is, big old Trevor. Third down and 15. Clawson's under center. Three-man rush. Draw play. Allen will not have enough for the first down as he takes it to the 35-yard line, and I would think that would be out of Walker's yeah, range. Charlie's, Charlie Rice always seems to go for these on fourth down. And uh, they're, they're out of field goal range, I believe. Would be, I would uh, say, what? yeah. yeah. See, they'll spot it uh, just inside the 35, so about a 52-yarder. And they will go for it on fourth down. Walker stays on the sideline. Notre Dame goes for it on fourth down and eight. Well, late guy. They had to call a timeout. They should. You know, Pittsburgh was very, very confused. And they called time. Panthers spend their first time out of the second half, and Juan Stats not happy about it. He's in Gus Mistakis' face. So timeout with 8.09 left in the third quarter. Notre Dame up by seven. Back at Notre Dame Stadium from the 35-yard line of Pittsburgh. Notre Dame going forward on fourth down. Lawson's pass is caught, but well short of first down yardage by Michael Floyd. Didn't get any blockers in front of him. Surprising call to me. I mean, I think with the receivers they have, throw the ball down past those first down markers and let these guys get it. Now, they did score a touchdown on this play last week in their opening drive, but I'll tell you, Elijah Fields has had a nice game as their nickelback. Yeah, and made the uh, recovery. recovery of the fumble yeah. punt, too, but tried that little screen pass to Floyd. Blockers never got in place. Penetration by the Panther defense, and Pittsburgh, after right seeing the offense yeah. turn the ball over, manages to get it right back with no harm done as the ball goes over on down. Maybe you let McCoy be your quarterback the rest of the way. Direct snap to McCoy. A face mask, it looks like. rid of one, got rid of two, but then is taken down after only a yard on the play. I don't see any flags. A tackle by Maurice Crum and Terrell Lambert. Well, he is hard to bring him down, didn't he? I thought somebody maybe had a hand on his face mask. No, I don't think, I didn't see it. Uh, nope, nope. So second down and nine after the direct snap to McCoy. They've done that three times in this game. But if they're going to win it, they're going to have to get some better play out of the quarterback position. You know, they, they really are. Gonna go right back to the shotgun and give the give uh, McCoy another chance. McCoy direct snap, fakes the handoff, keeps it up the middle. McCoy to the 40-yard line. Let's check in with Scooter. Hey Tom, well so far uh, LaShawn McCoy having a lot of fun in this game. Pit offense very upbeat on the sidelines in between the series after the turnover. McCoy got really vocal with a wide receiver Jonathan Baldwin who was frustrated. He couldn't prevent Harrison Smith from picking off the ball. 
McCoy kind of lightheartedly joking with his wide receiver, reminding him, hey, don't worry, it's early. Hey, get out of it. And uh, he kind of gave him a little dance, and he's having fun on the sidelines. Yeah. We have a lot more fun if they convert to this third and four. Bostic's under center. I'm not sure what that was. An attempted screen, I yeah. suppose. Yeah, really it looked about as bad as Notre Dame's did on fourth down. It's yeah. Nate Byam that makes the reception the tight end. And Ian Williams, the nose tackle, has had really kind of a quiet year for the Irish. Number 95 read it beautifully. They got a fought through two players. Byam sort of faked a block and then yeah. turned around to get the ball, but Williams was right there. So Dave Brightus is in punt formation for the Panthers, and the deep man is Golden Tate for Notre Dame. High punt, not too deep. Fair catch call. Tate makes it at the 30-yard line. It was a 32-yard punt with no return as we go to Jimmy Roberts in New York for a sprint game break. All right, Tom, well, we told you about this one at halftime. Here's the visual evidence. Wisconsin and Michigan State and the Badgers led for the entire game until now. Brett Swenson from 44 yards with 12 seconds remaining. His fourth field goal of the day, and despite a somewhat ordinary day from Javon Ringer, Wisconsin scores 12 points the last eight minutes. Uh, and they win it, Mich uh, Michigan State, I should say. Back to Tom Hammond. All right, so Michigan State with a one-point uh, win over Wisconsin as James Aldrich gets the call on first down for, our, for Notre Dame. You wonder if Charlie Wise is just trying to change the pace of the game a little bit with Aldrich, you know, just kind of grind out a first down or two. And Because the last couple of series, the Pittsburgh defense has kind of played their spread pretty well. So maybe you pounded some with James Aldrich. Big cushion down at the bottom here for Michael Floyd. Pitch the ball to the tailback, Aldridge. Made a little move inside and then try to get outside, but the sure tackling Scott McKillop hangs on for the downing of James Aldridge. Yeah, Scott McKillop uh, is really awesome as a tackler, a lot like Kyle McCarthy for the Irish. I mean, he just doesn't overrun it, wraps his guy up, doesn't necessarily look pretty, but as we said, at the end of the day, you look up, he's made 12 or 13 tackles. And an unbelievable game against South Florida with 12 solo tackles, a couple sacks, stopped a fake field goal. McKillop already has a business and marketing degree from Pitt, working on a second degree in administration of justice. Eight tackles on the day. Clawson dumped it off, saved the sack. He was in the neighborhood of a receiver, but he's slow getting up. Jabal yep. Sheard was bearing down on Jimmy Clawson. Was he outside that tackle box? Close. Yeah, I, that could have easily been a uh, grounding penalty. Kind of a look. moot point since it's fourth down, and they're going to have to give it up. Took a hit, too, and a little slow getting to the sideline. But Eric Most in punt formation. T.J. Porter. Had trouble handling it last time. Moss booms this one. Porter has to uh, retreat to get it at the 23. And then nice open field tackle as he's taken down on the first pass by Harrison Smith. 44-yard punt, eight on the return. Pitts ball when we come back. The Hesburgh Library, better known as Touchdown Jesus to football fans everywhere just over the wall of the stadium you can see it from the upper reaches of Notre Dame Stadium with four and a half minutes to go in the third Pitt takes over and a handoff to Stevens Howling gets a couple of yards on the draw play handoff Harrison Smith smelled it out a couple yards on the uh, play Trying to get to that yellow marker. Today's first down line brought to you by Xerox. Stevens, Stevens Howling, a pretty good runner in his own right. Led the team in rushing in 2005 and 2006. The only one, you know, LaShawn McCoy arrived on campus. He'd get relegated to a backup role, but he spots him. And when he comes in, you don't lose much. He's a pretty good player. Averaging four and a half yards a carry this season. Bostic's pass is complete. Caught by John Pelusi, the tight end. Only his second reception of the season. It's good for six yards before Rayshon McNeil 
cuts his feet out from under. They just need to get enough production out of the passing game, you know, to give McCoy and Stevens Howling a chance, right? You don't have to throw for 300 yards. And this is getting a little production. Get yourself production. Get yourself in a, in a manageable down at third and two. There's McCoy on the sideline. Stevens Howling remains at running back. Third down. Bostic's pass is caught. Odrick Turner able to hold on to it somehow. Though he was being wrapped up pretty strongly by Rayshon McNeil. It will be a first down for Pitt. And again, a change of place call for Matt Cavanaugh, the offensive coordinator. Third two, you figure, hey, give it one of those stud tailbacks you have. Instead, right into the face of a blitz. There's nobody blocking the guy coming into the quarterback's face. But Derek Turner makes a nice adjustment. As you look at Matt Cavanaugh, great player for the Panthers, the 76th National Championship team. First down, 43-yard line. Tailback Stevens howling. Blitz comes from Notre Dame. Fake the handoff. Bostic, sack! Harry Neal gets him back to the 35 for a loss of eight. Harry Neal coming on from Tiny Bun, North Carolina, as he told us, population 800 right there on the left part of your screen, just outraces the tight end, oh, excuse me, the tackle to get to the quarterback, Joe Thomas. That's just the speed of Kerry Neal on the edge. And this is a team on defense that's gotten faster and faster, and there's one of their faster defensive linemen, Kerry Neal. Second down and 18 now. This is a spot where they don't want Bostic, who's been inconsistent with his aerial game today. Retreats the pass and tosses underneath to Stevens Howling. And he gets some yards after the catch close to midfield. It's a gain of 14 yards. Terry Neal is second straight tackle. And not a bad play call, really. I mean, because if you decide to punt it, you can put Notre Dame in tough field position. Watch the open all down here in the left part of the screen, the open territory. And you know, when you're a running back and you have the ball in your hand, ordinarily you don't see that much green no. out there in front of you. Now the big third down. This one third down and four. Just shy of midfield. Well, they've thrown three quick passes on these short yards. It's time to pump and go maybe for a big play. Bostic across the middle, the slant caught by Kinder, and it's good for another pit first down. This one to the Irish 45-yard line. Another third down conversion on this drive by the Panthers. Yeah, that, that's Kinder's first catch, a guy who led the team in receptions and has 121 in his career. So Pat Bostic kind of responding with these short routes keeping the drive alive. You know, the Pitt defense has played sensationally the second half, and the offense is getting enough out of the passing game to make this very competitive. Make the handoff. Here's Stevens Howling, who got the direct snap, takes a page out of McCoy's book and advances inside the Irish 40. Stevens Howling is a good special teams player. He runs, he blocks, he catches. A really good, complete back. Blocked by Conridge Collins, too. And Jason Pinkston, the left tackle. Final seconds of the third quarter. And they won't get a playoff. That's the end of the third quarter at Notre Dame Stadium with the score Notre Dame 17 and Pittsburgh 10, but the Panthers driving. And we'll return to Notre Dame Stadium after these messages from your local NBC station. You're watching Notre Dame football on NBC, presented by Sprint. The traditional playing of Tchaikovsky's 18-12 overture signals the end of the third and start of the fourth quarter at Notre Dame Stadium as the cheerleaders and fans form the W in time to the music. Second down and four now for Pittsburgh as we open the fourth quarter and the Panthers at the Irish 39-yard line trailing by seven. Today's game brought to you by Sprint. High formation. Fake it, then hand it to Kinder. Kinder wants to throw. 
Got away from the rush and ducked out of bounds, chased by a Brian Smith. Well, you know, for, it was a probably good discretion by Kinder not throwing that ball. It, it looked like he was going to have a wide receiver open for a moment, but then uh, I think it was David Bruton who came over the top and probably would have been there. So smart play by Derek Kinder. He is a smart guy, graduated with an economics uh, major already. So now another third down. The Panthers have been good at converting these in the second half. Third down and two. Well, I think you've got to have two downs to convert this first if you need it. Irish showing blitz. Bostic retreats. His pass is incomplete. Wow. Dropped by Turner. That was a good throw by Pat Bostic. Should have been caught for Turner. Again, a little bit surprised you don't take two runs when you're primarily a running team to get the first down if you need it. But well, you can't throw it any better than that, right? Nope. Don't let him hold your newborn. <laughs> so fourth down. And the Panthers go for it at the 37-yard line. Here's the direct snap to Stevens howling, and he has the first down for Pittsburgh. Well, Matt Cavanaugh's doing a good job of really kind of mixing up the play calls, the formations. We've seen that shotgun formation where McCoy and Stevens howling both have gotten the direct snaps. Five-yard gain on this one. McCoy comes back in the game, freshly rested. Wants that signaling first down, picked up by Stevens Howling, and now to the sideline, and McCoy back in. Yeah, at, at quarterback again. Direct snap to him, tripped up as he crosses inside the 30. You know, they've been shutting McCoy down some, but, you know, this series coming right back on. How, how, you, how do you stop LaShawn McCoy? You've got a gang tackle. Watch how many Irish players around him there. There's just nowhere for him to go. And that's what you do. You have to get not one, not two, but I think three or four blue jerseys around LaShawn. Bostic to McCoy. And McCoy driving, finally turned back on the tackle by McCarthy and Bruton. Yeah, those are two good guys to tackle you, Bruton and McCarthy. You don't break their tackles. And similar to that play in the opening game against San Diego State where they caused a turnover, those two guys keep LaShawn McCoy out of the end zone. So it'll be third down and goal at the one-yard line. Over 100 yards rushing for LaShawn McCoy. He's the tailback here. Third and goal from the one. McCoy. Touchdown. LaShawn McCoy from a yard away gets the touchdown. LaShawn has rushed for 15 touchdowns this season. You know, LaShawn McCoy has done it all today. Remember the block that he had on the, the, the blitz pickup that allowed him to get that big first down to score another touchdown? He's kind of really taken this team on his back and carried them not only to the end zone, but potentially a tied ball game. We said at the top of the show, this guy is hard to tackle, and you see that today. This is a remarkable player. So Lee, the extra point attempt, he's now hit 99 in a row. And he's tied the game at 17. Thanks to LaShawn McCoy, Wanstead and the Panthers have not hit Notre Dame in the fourth. Thanks to MetLife for providing the aerial shots today. Visit MetLife.com to learn about the MetLife Blimp program. MetLife guarantees for the if in life. Most of the Irish felt kind of comfortable at halftime, don't you think? But the Pittsburgh Panthers come roaring back. Behind uh, that man, LaShawn McCoy. So Luke Briggs has it teed up and ready to kick it off. This one's a short kick, but the others have reached the end zone. Tate. Golden Tate surrounded, taken down short of the 25-yard line. 
Sean McCoy has uh, gained 105 yards now. 36 of them after contact. You're right, and you'll, you'll see a lot of them on this play. Picks up a couple of good blocks by Collins and Malecki, who's the right guard. Watch him pull out in, in the front. But at the end of this run, he does a lot of it is on, on his own. Carries two good tacklers, an extra four or five yards, and the catapult into the end zone to get the team even. Well, Notre Dame's offense has done nothing so far in the second half. Play action fake. Clawson got away from a would-be tackler and flips it out of bounds as he heads to the sideline. But uh, the Irish have struggled in this second half. Only seven yards of offense and no first downs in the second half. After amassing 240 yards and 17 points and a dozen first downs in the first half, and it has been, I think, Pat, first down that's gotten them in trouble. Yeah. And here's another first down miscue. Twice in the third quarter, they lost five yards right. on first down. Here they go no gain. Well, give some credit to the Panther defense. I mean, right. they have really been able to put pressure on them with really just four down linemen most of the time. Hand it off to Robert Hughes. Hughes breaks free for a moment. Nice gain. Got about nine. Austin Ransom tripped him up. It'll be third down in a yard for the Irish. Interesting to see if Charlie brings in James Aldrich on this third and one play. Good block there. Chris Stewart, Eric Olson, Dan Wanger. It's Phil Bennett, defensive coordinator, knowing when James Aldrich comes in, he is their power back. And Asaph Schwab, the Schwab, the fullback. Lined up in the eye with James Aldridge, the tailback. Camara in motion. Aldridge hit at the line of scrimmage, but falls forward for the first down with Scott McKillop, the sure tackle man hanging on, but did get enough for the first. Scott McKillop, another really good tackle. But James Aldridge, you know, it's, it's one thing when you you kind of come in once in a while, pick up the first down, but when everybody knows you're going to carry it in short yardage and you still are able to get three or four yards, that's uh, that's pretty strong running by Aldridge. So a first down for Notre Dame, their initial first down of the second half. Robert Hughes back in the game, picks his way forward for three or four yards, tackled by McKillop. McKillop was the guy who's... Uh, won the Big East Defensive Player of the Week three times already this year. And you see the uh, running back distribution. They use all three of these guys really in different ways. Armando Allen, kind of uh, the premier all-around back. Aldridge, a short yardage guy. Robert Hughes, kind of in the middle. Does a little of both. Second down. Hughes. Trying to pick his way forward, nowhere to go. Stopped at the line of scrimmage by McKillop and others. That play never developed. From now on, just say, if you don't know who made the tackle, just guess and say McKillop, <laughs> right? You're going to be right. Number 40, right here in the middle of your screen. Just kind of waiting patiently. You see how he just kind of waited and waited and knew or he felt that Aldridge was going to have a cutback run and was there to make the stuff. Third down and six. Shotgun, Clawson. Blitz from Pitt. The pass into traffic and caught in traffic by Golden Tate. Is he strong? Golden Tate saw that blitz at the very beginning and pointed at the guy to blitzing, letting Jimmy Clausen know, hey, this guy's coming. I'm going to run the side adjustment. Even before that, I was watching Golden Tate. He saw it. He pointed to Jimmy Clausen. They both saw the same thing. Good throw and tough catch by Tate. First down at midfield. Toss on a first down pass. It's caught by Floyd. And Michael Floyd is close to another first down. Tackled by Aaron Berry. And suddenly the Irish passing game starts to click. Yeah, it's that short passing game. You know, we, we've seen early in this year, they certainly can throw the long, the long ball, right? And they've done that a lot successfully. But when they want to get back in rhythm, oftentimes they'll feed the ball to James Aldridge th some and then go into their short game or short passing package. No That's huddle good. offense. Let's see if they go for a home run here on second down in a yard. Nope, they're going to hand it off to Hughes, and he'll be lucky to make a yard. 
Romeus and Duncan up front for the Panthers. As you, as you think about the Irish, if you're an Irish fan and you're moving closer and closer to field goal range, how much better are you feeling about your kicker, Brandon Walker, who's made his last four kicks, including one today? It was enough, barely, for the Notre Dame first down. New set of downs for the Irish, driving with seven minutes plus here in the fourth quarter and tied at 17. Armando Allen back into the lineup. Aside Jimmy Clawson in the shotgun formation. Four wide receivers. Clawson's pass on target and a nice move by Tate. Here's the speedster Tate. Finally caught around the 10-yard line by the Seco. Well, Tommy, it shows you how hard they defend. In the first half, you're worried about Michael Floyd, and you kind of do a pretty good job in the second half. And then what happens? You throw it to the other guy, number 23, who's so good after the catch. High school running back, 10, 800 meter speed in high school. And the ball to the cheerleader there as well. <laughs> but that's, that's, you know, just a good feel, good instincts by Golden Tate. 30 yard gain, first down for the Irish. 12 over 30 yards for Tate this year. First and goal at the 10. Aldridge, the tailback in the eye, gets the handoff from Clawson. And the pounder pounds it to the six-yard line. The Golden Tate's had a lot of long plays. You see, starting with San Diego State. One, two, what, three of those for touchdowns. Today he's had three of them, 48, 37, and 30 yards. Yikes. And this is, you know, this is something they really didn't have last right. year. Really why they won three and nine, right? You got Michael Floyd and Golden Tate make them a completely different team. Second and goal, six-yard line. Schwab the fullback, Aldridge the tailback. Clawson to the end zone, this deflected and incomplete. Think about Jimmy Clausen, and most of the time he makes up his mind very, very quickly. We talked about how well he prepares. Mondays, just he and Charlie get together. On Thursday, he and Charlie and Mike Haywood get together, and they throw out the plays in the game plan that he doesn't like. They let him throw those out. And then on Fridays at 3 o'clock, just he and Charlie sit down and watch and look at all 60 pass plays in their uh, game plan for that week. Third down and goal, six-yard line. I'm under, I'm under. Oh, it fakes the blitz. Here's the fade pass, and it is Tate. Yes, touchdown. Had to wait for the official's call. He got the foot down. Touchdown, Golden Tate from Jimmy Clawson from six yards out. In the strong hands of Golden Tate. We were talking to him about this very thing yesterday. Right there. Got both feet in. You see, the ball just never moves in his hands. He said, you know, I have small hands, but boy, are they strong. That's what he said. Small but strong. And he had a bandage on one of them yesterday yeah. when we talked to him. And yet, when you gripped him for that handshake, Didn't you knew get your hand back. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's a fun guy to watch. Whoops. Band member down? Or no, it's a Pittsburgh player. And in some obvious pain. That's right in front of the pit band at the uh, side of the end zone. So he was probably involved in that play with Golden Tate. So can't see who exactly who it is. It is uh, Ricky Gary. Up to his feet, though. That's a good sign. Walking over to the Pittsburgh bench. He's the one that he kind of slipped right there as he was trying to jam Golden Tate. Gary coming up the field from Pitt. So a clutch grab by Golden Tate from Jimmy Clawson. And now the extra point attempt by Walker. Clawson now three touchdown passes again today for Clawson. That was a big one after the yeah. Irish offense had done nothing. Yep. An impressive drive down the field, and the extra point by Walker is good. Well, when they needed it, Jimmy Clawson and Golden Tate lead the drive. 12 plays, 75 yards, Irish back in front.
Back at Notre Dame Stadium, Ryan Burkhardt has the ball teed up for the Irish as the Panthers are about to get it back. Jimmy Clausen, 235 yards passing and three scores today. They are the touchdown makers from the last drive. Talking to Coach Ron Paulus, Clausen and Tate. Putting the Irish back on top. They got the clutch drive when they needed it. Now it's up to the defense to try to hold Pitt. The Rod Stevens howling from the five-yard line. Stevens howling, breaking free for a moment, wrestled down short of the 30-yard line where the Panthers will take over. So it will be Pittsburgh and their star, LaShawn McCoy, with the ball when we return to Notre Dame Stadium. Back at Notre Dame Stadium where Pitt puts the ball in play from its own 30, trailing by seven now. Five and a half minutes to go. Bostic chased from the pocket. Gonna run with it, dives across the 30-yard line for a gain of a yard or two. So Notre Dame responds with a drive after Pitt had tied the score. The last time Pitt had the ball, they had a 15-play, 70-yard touchdown drive that consumed over eight and a half minutes, which is the longest drive by a Notre Dame opponent in terms of number of plays and time elapsed this year. You know, and the way the Notre Dame had that last drive, or, or used the clock on that last drive, if you're Dave Wanstead, you're saying, hey, this could conceivably be our last drive. Second down. Blitz. Picked up. Bostic's pass caught by Porter. Still loose as he shakes the tackler, and he's down all inside the 35-yard line. A gain of 36 yards before Terrell Lambert's able to get him down. T.J. Porter. Strong play by Porter. Again, first make the catch, then you turn, break one tackle, and then hang on to the ball because uh, because uh, Terrell Lambert really tries to take that ball out. But the strong hands of T.J. Porter uh, you know, uh, keeps possession. And a big play, a guy who had a bunch of them last week against Rutgers. Ball at the 32 of the Irish. First down, Pittsburgh. Today's first down line brought to you by Xerox. That was the play they needed at the time they needed it. Take to McCoy. Bostic in the pocket with protection for the end zone. And it is incomplete. David Bruton read that the entire way. I mean, I think one of the things is a quarterback, you got to look that free safety off. And he and Baldwin in a wrestling match here. Yeah. yeah. Baldwin, you know, almost makes a great play, even though David Bruton's right there. But that's what you ask your, your free safety to do. He's got to have range. He's got to make plays. And good throw by Boston. But maybe if he just looks the free safety off some, creates a little bit more room for the receiver. Charlie Weiss. Tension mounting. Bostic directing traffic. It's second down and ten. Bostic hands to McCoy. Draw play. Bounced off one man. Then gets to the outside. Here's LaShawn McCoy. Finally run out of bounds at the nine-yard line by David Burton. 18 yards when it appeared he was stopped at the line of scrimmage. Well, he was stopped two or three different times, Tom. It wasn't just once it looked like. First, he just had a trouble getting his footing. Stopped right once. Bumps in his guys. Bounces off it. Almost falls down. Stopped twice. And then, uh, really, almost stopped again by Brute. So three different times he was stopped and then restarted. And he gets to into high gear in about two steps, didn't he, Tom? He's something special. Yeah, he Sean really McCoy. is a good player. Really is a good player. 14-yard line, first down. McCoy for the direct snap. There it is. Ran into his own man. Managed to keep his footing. <laughs> and is tackled at the 11-yard line by Bruton. How many tackles do Bruton and McCarthy have now? Well, I'll tell you, Bruton now has 14, and McCarthy has 12. You're right. It's just the balance that, that LaShawn McCoy has. I mean, again, that could have been a six-yard loss. Ends up picking up about four. Ran into his own man, Andre Wright. So you really, the Irish have not really been able to stop him when he's back in that shotgun formation. Although, again, Pittsburgh goes for the quarterback under center. 127-yard day for McCoy. He's the tailback here. 
Bostic's going to throw to the end zone. Is it up there and way over and had no chance yeah. for Baldwin. The ball sailed out of bounds. Got to give him a chance, right, Tom? Yeah. We say it every time. Right. You know, you got to keep the ball in the field so your 6'5 receiver can go get it. Now third down and five. Four down territory, of course, for Dave Wanstead. Well, it's, it's, it's amazing. And LaShawn McCoy is coming off four straight games of 140 plus yards. And what you said, 127, I think, on today. Yes. Ball at the 10, third down and six. Bostic, same play. And again, it carries Baldwin out of bounds. He learned nothing from the first one. Got to give your man a chance. The pass yeah, and, again carries him out of bounds. I, I, you know, as we see it every week by quarterbacks, and Matt Cavanaugh will just say, you got to give him a chance. Now, the receiver's got to help him a little bit, too, by getting a little closer split to the rest of the team. But, boy, that did the ball's thrown out of bounds. So, timeout hit. It'll be fourth down and six when we come back. 2.27 left. Tense moment at Notre Dame Stadium. 2.27 left. Pittsburgh facing a fourth down and six. Trailing by seven with the ball at the Notre Dame 10-yard line. Right in front of the Notre Dame student section, too. Sean McCoy's not even in the game. Stevens howling the tailback as Bostic is going to throw for it. There's the same play three times in a row. Yeah. This time he gave him a chance, <laughs> and Baldwin caught it. You think that's what they said to him on the sideline? Yeah, just keep the ball in play. He's six foot five. Keep the ball in play. Let him go up and get it. And Jonathan Baldwin yeah. did for his third receiving touchdown of the season. Yeah, you know, he's got five inches on McNeil. And just keep underthrow it, keep the ball in play, and let him do that. So good well, play, and this is, uh, he hasn't missed an extra point third, yet, has Connor Third Lee. time was the charm, and Lee is looking for his 100th extra point in a row. If he does, it'll tie the game with 222. Well, On the money. Good hold. Yeah. Good hold. Got it done. And Andrew Janako, the holder, did a great job of getting that thing. And Pat Bostic. Finally yeah. connected after three straight tries with Jonathan Baldwin. You know, and I, and I love Matt Cavanaugh for going back to it. He just knows, hey, I've got a five to six inch height advantage. Throw it up, keep the ball in the field to play, under throw it, and let your guy do that. Notre Dame's done that all season long to their opponents, and Jonathan Baldwin catches his third touchdown of his freshman campaign. And each of the three touchdowns by the Panthers today kept alive by a key fourth down conversion. Time now for our Liberty Mutual Legends of the Game. Frank Leahy coached Notre Dame for 11 seasons, during which the Irish enjoyed six undefeated campaigns, four national championships, and an unbeaten string of 39 games in the late 40s. Leahy also coached four Heisman Trophy winners, and before the game today, he was honored at the ceremonial coin flip, you see the statue of Coach Leahy outside Notre Dame Stadium. Frank Leahy, one of the legends of the game. Luke Briggs will kick it off for the Panthers. And the dangerous Golden Tate, the deepest man for Notre Dame. Briggs booms it downfield. Tate will field it at the five. Here's Golden Tate, got a block from Aldridge. Oh, good special teams coverage by the Panthers this year, uh, this game. They swarmed Golden yeah. Tate, did they not? And the first to arrive on the scene was Brian Kaiser. You know, if you're a quarterback, you just relish these moments, your chance to be on this stage. And, uh, you know, we've spent some time with Jimmy Claus, and he, he loves this big stage, loves being the quarterback at Notre Dame, and here's his chance. Game tied with just over two minutes. Three timeouts remaining for the Irish as well. He has Robert Hughes in the backfield. He's in the shotgun. Excuse me, it's Armando Allen that's back there. Allen next to Clawson. 
Boston. Scrambling away through a dangerous pass that draws a flag. Michael Floyd, Aaron Barry bumped into him with the ball in the air. And Barry had pretty good coverage. Yeah, I thought Clawson made a mistake by even attempting it, but he Pass got away with it. Number 17 on the defense. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. Aaron Barry can't, can't even believe it. He's number 17 right over there. And he had his left, left arm. Hand, yeah. left, left arm, hand. left hand around the back of Michael Floyd, and that was the uh, penalty. Yeah, but they were able to flush Jimmy Clausen with just a four-man rush again. Rushing four, playing seven back. From the 31, Clausen knocked down by Sheard. Knocked down by Sheard. Yeah, He's had it. several knockdown today, at least a couple and maybe yep, three. You're right. Again, very disruptive guy is Jamal Sheard, number 97. Watch him time that jump perfectly. Yeah. On the right shoulder, the guy's had four and a half sacks as well. Yeah, what, what an advantage when you can put that much heat on with just your four guys, right, Tom? Then you can cover downfield. Yeah. As they have done for the most part today. 2.02 on the clock, second down, 10. Penalty marker downfield. Floyd tackled viciously at the 30-yard line. Chappelle. The uh, flag came in early and it was downfield. That would usually indicate against Pitt. Holding. Number seven on the defense. 10-yard penalty. First down. Chappelle. Boy, Onstead is upset at that. You said they averaged, what, three penalties a game? That's their seventh today. Uncharacteristic for the Panthers. And it gives Notre Dame the automatic first down, and the ball now at the 41-yard line. Berka, or, uh, Walker on the sideline, warming up, keeping warm. The left-footed place kicker of the Irish. First down, Clawson, chased from the pocket. Scrambling, got a saving block, and now throws it away. Another good rush by Jabal Sheard. And he just keeps on coming. There he is, Jabal. I thought maybe Clawson pulled the trigger a little too soon this On the time. rush? Yeah. Uh, just getting outside? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe it looks not. like, yeah, Sheard, Sheard got the good coverage again. We said it. They're, they're dropping seven or playing seven in coverage. No blitzes there. This is the guys have been very, very disruptive this year. You know, 13 negative plays he's caused this year for Phil Bennett's defensive team. Now they got three down linemen in the game. Second down and ten. Just rush three, eight back. There's another penalty marker down as Rudolph caught it in a seam for ten yards. Penalty marker came flying in at the conclusion right. of the play. It's usually pass interference when that guy throws the field judge. Pass interference, yeah. number nine on the offense. 15-yard ah. penalty, second down. Indeed it was. Rudolph, you could see by the look on his face that he wasn't happy. The push-off by the freshman, Kyle Rudolph. Kyle Rudolph is a guy that, he's right, right there. That's a tough call. Not, yeah. Not much. No. But boy, that puts the Irish yeah. clock running down to 110, second and 25. And again, you're going to see the three man rush, I think. Which my third man. From their own 26 yard line. Boston's pass through traffic to Rudolph again. Boy, was that a tight throw. 20 yards on the play. Yeah, Austin Ransom, number 86, had awfully good coverage on Kyle Rudolph. The Irish will use one of their three timeouts. Boy. Notre Dame stops the clock. 52 seconds left. Boy, he threaded that one in to Kyle Rudolph. Thank you. 
Walker keeping warm. And go to NBCSports.com immediately following the telecast for the Von Post postgame report. Catch the live press conferences of Charlie Weiss and Dave Wanstead, plus interviews, analysis, full game highlights, the Von Post postgame report on NBCSports.com. Hey, Tom, how about Brandon Walker? You know, you have to appreciate his stick to itness. Just had an awful start to the season, but has made his last, what, three field goals? Four now. Four field goals now. And uh, if you're thinking about what they need to do, they need to get down to about, oh, the 34-yard line. His career, or his long this year is 42 yards. Career long is 48. So somewhere around the 30 to 32-yard line they would have to get to give Brandon Walker a shot. The the and, uh, you know, that's why I think Charlie Weiss just kind of kept with them all year. It's because, you know, sooner or later, in the course of a season, your kicker gonna is going to have to make a kick like he may have to make later this afternoon. But first, the Irish have some work to do. It's third down and four. There's a handoff. It's to Didn't Armando it. Allen, stopped a yard yeah. short. They have to use another timeout, I think. Yep. It will be a timeout in Notre Dame. They'll have one remaining. 40 seconds on the clock. Bit of a good ball game. You know, really good defense in this second half in particular. Sunday night, it's football night. Yeah, Sunday night is football night. Peyton Manning and the Colts against the Patriots. Football night begins tomorrow, 7 Eastern only on NBC. The Colts have lost a couple in a row, yeah, but what a great rivalry they have with the uh, New England Patriots. Uh, also, the Colts get uh, Joseph Adai, their running back, back into the lineup from injury, and Bob Sanders, their hard-hitting safety. Yeah, so good news for the Colts. Sure. Matt Castle's done a pretty good job, yeah, hasn't Matt, he? For the, yeah, absolutely. For the an old family friend of ours in Southern California. He actually came in to see me a couple of years ago to think about getting a job in finance. Didn't think he was going to get drafted. Now he's starting on uh, Sunday night. So the Irish taking the timeout, facing a fourth down and one at midfield. 40 seconds left in a tie game. I'm going to give you a hint that Scott McCullough is going to be involved in this. And with a play clock ticking down inexplicably sloppy by Notre Dame, they have to use their last timeout well, to avoid the delay of game. What went wrong that, there? That, that's a valuable one because wow. you need maybe to oh, rush yeah. your field goal team on, right? Yeah. It takes all the run after this play, all the running opportunities really out of the game. Costly miscue by the Irish. You know, that's something that it, with Charlie Weiss, he had, for years has managed the clock so well, a surprising error there by the Irish. Now, of course, if they do run it and make the first down, the clock will stop momentarily and then a chance to spike the ball. So when you think, I, don't, I think you call two plays right here. I think yeah. I don't think you're going to see a spike. It's only 40, only 40 seconds. I think there's plenty of time for them to You have your fourth down play. You assume you're going to get the first. You already have that first down play called. Remember now, the clock will stop, though, if it is a first down. Killup, who's uh, right here, is a guy that's got 12 tackles on the day already. Swap the fullback. Aldrich is the tailback. Eighty yard. Clawson faked, looking to throw. Now scrambling. Clawson dives and will be short of the first down. The ball will go over to Pitt. You know, with James Aldridge, who has been so good in short yardage plays this year. Surprising call to me, Tom. And you know Pitt I mean, wasn't fooled either. Yeah, and J yeah, he was James Aldridge is the guy who's pounded it all last week and today. And you don't want to rely on Jimmy Clausen to get your first down. Greg Williams on the tackle for the Panthers. Clock stops on the change of possession. And hey, give Phil Bennett's defense some credit. They have played very, very well here, particularly the second half. And remember, they have the good kicker in oh, Connor Lee. Absolutely. You know, his career long is 48 yards, need to get to about the 31. They still have a timeout left. Just inside midfield. 
32 seconds. Bostic's pass, incomplete. Again, high and through the hands of Jonathan Baldwin. Here's Connor Lee, their place kicker. 27 seconds. Incredible career for Connor Lee. It's watch another high ball. Lee has kicked, he kicked four field goals against Syracuse earlier this year. Already graduated, an MBA student in Pittsburgh. Missed only eight field goals in his career and has made 42. Yeah, but again, they need to get down to, oh, maybe the 31 yard line, 30 yard line to give him a chance. Shotgun, Bostic on second and 10. Keith to the rush, he throws it up for grabs and it's picked off by David Booten. There's the safety playing center field and Booten picks it off. The senior has made so many big plays, makes another one there. That's Bruton who is injured. He's a guy that just really, you know, saved a touchdown earlier, Tom. Has 14 tackles on the day. Maybe saves the game on that play. Boy, as he had, you know, he's, Charlie Weiss said early in the year, if, you know, they're, they're leading NFL prospect on the team. Watch him right in the middle of the field. Number 12, the range that he has. Because again, it looks like Baldwin has a chance. Baldwin should go up and make a little better effort on that to try to knock that one down. What do you think, Tom? Yep. Fell down on his right shoulder hard. Well, maybe it was his <laughs> left, but hitting the ground hard and then rolling over in pain. And still down. Charlie Weiss said about he was in his first recruiting class. Remember, Charlie got the job late, and David Bruton was one of his last guys that he got in that first recruiting class. He said, you know, I thought he was too small. I didn't think he liked to hit. But the last two years, David Bruton has really come on for Coach Weiss. Who now comes out to check on his senior safety. And if they go to overtime, they're going to need him if he can go. How do you replace his 14 tackles? Interception by Bostic. He's had some, some high throws, but I, I think Baldwin could have done a little better job of trying to protect that throw. And Clawson with 21 seconds and no timeouts remaining. Remember, he's got these dynamic wide receivers, but Pitt has done a good job of really trying to uh, double cover him on the outside of the long balls. Big hand from the Notre Dame faithful as Bruton gets to his feet. So on the interception, 21 seconds are left, 27-yard line. Notre Dame takes over. Well, here's Tate at the top. There's Floyd at the bottom. Remember, no timeouts. So they'll hand it off on the draw play. And there's a flag, two flags down as Allen is pushed out of bounds. Holding number 55 on the offense, 10 yard penalty, first down. Gary Colson with the hold. So now 13 seconds. And I suspect you just play for overtime yeah, right here. Yeah, there's Eric Olson. Holding McKillop. That's one way to prevent him from making it's another about, tackle. About the only way. Yeah. See James Aldridge has come in. I suspect I'll give it to him and uh, run it out. I don't think he can run it out. I just don't want to take a quarterback, take a knee. Lawson does take the knee, pitches the ball to the referee. And the final seconds will tick away. And there it is. So we're headed to overtime, and we'll see who wins the coin toss and be back with overtime right after these messages. You're watching Notre Dame football in NBC, presented by Sprint. Back at Notre Dame Stadium, nobody has left, of course. As well. 
first sprint plays of the game. There was a bunch of them. How about that one play right before halftime by Golden Tate? That was an incredible play, too, huh? As we told you, we'd bring you the rules. There they are. And Notre Dame electing to play defense. So Pittsburgh will get their chance from the 25. And when we get to the third overtime, if we do, mandatory two-point conversion try. Yeah, Notre Dame has not tried one yet this year. Jimmy Clausen, although he's played very, very well, he's got banged around a little bit today, hasn't he? He has, and the Panthers have done it without uh, any gimmicks, no. seemingly. Yeah, just yeah. those four down yeah. linemen. Clausen throwing for three touchdowns, no interceptions. So here comes Pat Bostic, who has taken his team into a tie with Clausen and Notre Dame in regulation. They put it in play, first down from the 25-yard line. LaShawn McCoy, tail back in the eye. Fake to McCoy, Bostick's pass. Incomplete, too wide for his intended receiver. So Bostick misses on his first pass of overtime. It was Collins, the fullback, the intended receiver. David Bruton in at free safety for the Irish. Freshman corner, Robert Blanton in. Well, the timer just went off for the sprinklers, Tom. Whoops, not good. Yeah. That's at the other end, luckily. Well, the you know, the, 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 the sprinklers always supposed to go on after the game is over. They <laughs> forgot to regulate for overtime. I don't think I've ever seen that happen. <laughs> We've seen a lot. And the flash bulbs are flashing all over the stadium. <laughs> yeah. So... Luckily, they didn't. Uh, they weren't about to put <laughs> in the ball and play on second yeah, down from yeah. that end, huh? Well, you know, I just wonder whether the referees would even let him play in that end later on. You know, just worried about guys slipping and sliding yeah, no, around. I think that would be a. They might just say judicious. They say, you know, let's let's forget that end. Yeah. Tell you I have seen it all. It's even getting some of the fans, I think, in the end zone. George Toma have anything to do with this, you think? <laughs> he gets blamed for most things. He reseated the field yeah. in the offseason. I would guess they're going to have to keep it at the other end, which if they do, it's a disadvantage for the Irish because that's the student end where the sprinklers just went off. So they got the uh, sprinklers turned off. The great flood was stopped. The groundskeepers did their job yeah. there, coming to the rescue. There they go. So, after that momentary <laughs> distraction, second down and 10. Yeah, Charlie Weiss has a lot of confidence in his freshman cornerback, Robert Blanton, who's in now at a very, very important part of the game. McCoy. Here's McCoy. Breaking free and just tackled at the 10-yard line. Touchdown saving tackle after he had ripped off 15 yards and giving Pittsburgh a first down. It was David Bruton that made the tackle. Yeah, all you have to do is get a couple of things out of the passing game and then just give this guy the ball. Some pretty good blocks up front by Malecki and Thomas, C.J. Davis. There's Williams in there as well, but he does 85% of that on his own. Tremendous vision by LaShawn McCoy. First down and goal at the 10. We're in overtime. First possession by the team. McCoy again, this time stopped after a gain of a yard. Shoestring tackle made by the Irish. It looked like a good play by Justin Brown, I think, early on. I think Justin Brown really, right just off the screen. No, it's not just Kerry Neal. Kerry Neal just kind of jumps around the block of Collins to get an early hit on McCoy and not let him get his momentum going. It's a good play by Kerry Neal. Second down and goal. Ball rests just inside the 10-yard line. Bostick swings the pass to McCoy. He wants to go one-on-one. -on -one. Cuts back and falls. Slips and falls. No sprinklers on that end, but he still slipped down. Lost four yards.
Well, you know, in this too, if, you, if you're Notre Dame, don't you figure, hey, you're going to have to try to put two guys on Jonathan Baldwin to try to prevent that fade route that they scored late in a touchdown just late in the fourth quarter on? He has a height advantage on any of the secondary men for the Irish. Baldwin's the guy way up at the top of the screen. Third down, Bostic fakes it, hands to McCoy. Here's McCoy getting to the outside, got a block, but pushed out of bounds by Kyle McCarthy. Short of the five-yard line, it brings up fourth down. Okay. Kyle McCarthy, again, his 13th tackle of the day. And remember, in that opening game against San Diego State, Kyle McCarthy it was the guy that really saved the day for the Irish. McCoy and made the first man whiff. Yeah. So here is Connor Lee on to attempt the field goal to give Pittsburgh the lead. A year ago, Pat Coons for the Irish blocked a number of field goal attempts. 22 yards to put Pitt on top in overtime. Snap, kick, it is up, and it is good. Connor Lee, 22-yard field goal on the first possession in overtime. Now the Irish will send their offense out. Here's the hold and the kick. Lee knocks it through. What a, what a valuable guy to have on your team. Connor Lee just virtually automatic. 43 of what, 51 now? The nice thing about Jimmy Clausen knows exactly what he has to do is get, get that ball into the end zone, and he's got some pretty dynamic guys who right. know how to do that. But, of course, if they turn it over, the game will be over. Chris Stewart tripped on the way out, believe yeah, it or not. limping. He, he actually was walking out to the, uh, to the field and just kind of fell down. Pittsburgh leading for the first time in the game. Their first lead comes on a field goal in overtime. Chris Stewart, kind of a freak injury, as you said, back. Yeah, just, uh... That means Trevor Robinson will come in to replace him. Trevor Robinson, a guy, although a freshman, has played a lot for Chris Stewart and for Eric Olson at both guards. Here's the first offensive play in overtime for the Irish. They come out with Allen, lone man in the backfield, Clawson under center. Camara in motion. And to Allen. First down run, trying to get to the corner. Inside the 20, down to about the 18-yard line. Armando Allen on first down, about seven yards. Good stretch play, good vision by Armando Allen. Most importantly, just kind of securing that ball before he gets tackled. Camara gave him a block long enough to yeah. let him turn the corner. Play by Barry, eighth tackle of the day for Aaron Barry, the corner. So second and two and all options available. <laughs> Allen to the other side, stretch play, first down. Spinning as he's knocked down inside the 10. Well, I tell you, that's a good determined run by Armando Allen. Really, when they did two in a row. I mean, this, you know, this offensive team is hard to get defend because they have so many different guys they can either throw it to or hand it to to make plays. And the last two times Armando, Armando Allen has been that guy. First down and goal. The ball squarely on the 10-yard line. Run Allen again. Uh, I, I, I'd get some of my, my tall receivers a chance. Yeah, the quarterbacks always want to throw it. Here's Allen inside the five down to the four. You know, he's not even their pounder either, Tom, you know. He used to be their change of pace back. Now he's their ever down back. But you'd think down here James Aldridge would get the call, but it's been all Armando Allen. And boy, he has seized the moment. Trevor Robinson, who came in to replace Stewart, the freshman with a big block, to help spring Armando Allen, who's carried the ball three straight times. Carried it on first down for eight. Carried it on second down for seven. Carried it on first down for seven that time. 
Second and goal from the three-yard line. Armando Allen, nowhere to go this time. Surrounded and driven back from the three-yard line. That was Scott McKillop, who else, leading yeah, the charge. Yeah. Elijah Fields got in on it, too. 13 for McKillop. Well, remember now, Brandon Walker has struggled this season, though he's made four in a row. So now you got to put it in the end zone with one of your big receivers that you called for, Pat, I would yeah. think. You, you've got one, uh, Kamara 6'5", Rudolph 6'6", six, six, Floyd is 6'3". Jimmy Clausen throws it away. That was close, wasn't it? Hey, a good pass rush again. Good coverage. Good rush. Means Jimmy Clausen has to throw it away. So now Brandon Walker, who has struggled mightily. You're bringing a bad luck, Tom. Well, he's, he's made four in a row. You just have to document it, but only <laughs> five of ten, or five of eleven, excuse me. And as we said, uh, Pittsburgh has blocked two field goals this season, seven kicks in all, including one punt today. 22 yards to tie it up in overtime. Walker sends it on its way, and it is good. The Irish moved the ball well early in their possession and then stall inside the five. Just convert a crucial third down. I'll tell you, a big target is Michael Floyd. 6'3", 215 pounds, just battles off the press coverage. And then Clausen does a good job of leading him, you know, throwing it away from the defender, and then he just pulls his way for the first down. That's a good play all the way around. Getting off the line of scrimmage, then the good throw, and good run after the catch. Michael Floyd, 10 catches, 100 yards, and two touchdowns, his fourth 100-yard receiving game. Fourth game in a row, he's caught a touchdown pass too, Tom. Going, going, going. From the 11, first down for the Irish. Hand off to Allen. Nowhere to go. Tackled for a loss in the play by Aaron Berry from his cornerback yeah. spot. I tell you, Aaron Berry's had some moments today, some good moments, you know, some bad moments in the passing game. But boy, what a day tackling for Berry. Ninth tackle of the day for Aaron Berry. Guy we talked to this week said, uh, you know, I'm just anxious to get back on the field after the way we played and I played against Rutgers. Didn't blame anybody, just said, hey, I didn't get it done. but. And now Trevor Robinson, who had spelled Chris Stewart, is out, replaced by Taylor Deaver, sophomore at right guard. Clawson whips it, it's complete. Caught by Tate, but ridden out of bounds by Thatcher. A little change of pace by Phil Bennett, defensive coordinator, bringing the blitz that time. See number 86, Austin Ransom coming. Little zone blitz as Greg R Romeus comes out. The was tipped. reflected by Ransom. Ransom's had a nice year for the Panthers. Notre Dame. Notre Dame will take a timeout with the ball at the eight-yard line and facing a third down and seven. Let's take another look at that uh, ball that was tipped yet still completed. Quick throw. It was uh, number 86 Ransom who got his hand on that. And Tate makes a one-handed grab, but well, that's twice. You know, Tate's kind of really stuck with the ball. You know what I mean? Remember at yep. the end of the first half, you know, good concentration by Golden Tate. Talked about him making that adjustment to wide receiver, and indeed he has. There's the uh, Mensa meeting on the sideline. <laughs> Irish have used their final timeout in overtime. Bill Bennett. A nice final, job. Uh, yeah, final word for his defense for Chappelle. Don't forget after the game, the Bonnage Post Game Show at NBCSports.com. Third down and seven. Third and seven at the eight. That's 40, that's 40. Clausen's in the shotgun. Winds up, throws for the end zone, and Floyd can't catch it. 
They were ready for it was Pitts. They had men around him, and yeah, Floyd yeah. went up and couldn't bring it down. Yeah, but how about Aaron Berry again? Aaron Berry a couple times in the tackles, that time on coverage. I mean, it is tough being a cornerback, Tom. You know that. It's you know, you got these big athletic receivers, you got to cover, you got to make tackles, and Aaron Berry, although it was a high ball, Aaron Berry, pretty good coverage. So now 26-yard field goal attempt by Brandon Walker. And it is good. Good for Brandon Walker bouncing back after a really tough start. Dave Wan says, hey, we got him right when we want him. Let's go. A touchdown but win it for the Panthers. They hold Notre Dame to a field goal in the second overtime. It's like a defensive back, you know, you, who gets beaten. If you miss some field goals, you just got to forget about it. Make the next one. Well, they, and he's being pushed in practice by David Ruffer, yeah. the man that's been recruited from the dorms here at Notre Dame. <laughs> and it's made the Walker a better kicker. Yeah. And uh, Hall. <laughs> to the winner of this game goes bowl eligibility. A six victory would make either Pitt or Notre Dame bowl eligible. And all the Panthers need is a touchdown from Pat Fostick at quarterback. Well, that's saying something the way the Irish defense has been playing, though, Tom. Now McCoy retreats to line up in the backfield behind Bostick. McCoy gets the call, hit at the line of scrimmage. They were ready for the... Key running back there, hitting him as soon as he got the football. Maurice Crum was the first to arrive. Well, I still haven't seen Notre Dame really slow down McCoy when he's been in that direct shotgun formation, you know, that old hog formation. Haven't seen it yet here in overtime. Second down. Bostic throws a screen to McCoy. Caught oh, in the open oh. field and tackled. What Great a tackle. key tackle by Ian Williams against yeah. the shifty McCoy. That's two screens Ian Williams has made play on. But watch number 42. Mo Crum reads it, just can't quite get there. Crum saw it, but Ian Williams for the second time today made a good play on a screen pa uh, pass. Here's third down and one coming up. Look uncertain in the huddle, the do. Panthers. I'm looking at the sideline, and I think they're yeah, going to call, call a timeout. Time. Yep. So timeout, Pittsburgh facing a third down and one from the Irish 16-yard line in double overtime. Check our uh, score ticker there as we look at some other college football games from the day. Arkansas beating Tulsa. Was Tulsa averaging over 50, I think? Missouri squeaking one out against Baylor. Alabama as expected. Here's Tech with a big lead over Florida State. Paul Johnson did a good job there, Tech. Yeah, hadn't? as we yeah. figured he would. Oregon leading Cal. No, Cal, excuse me, Cal yeah, was Cal, up by Cal's three. Yeah. Cal's a pretty good football team. Javon Best, their running back. Third one. Would you would you give it to the Sean McCoy time? I definitely huh? would. And I don't think there's any question about it. Although they, facing a similar situation they earlier, they handed it to the to the uh, fullback Collins. Uh, yeah, that's true. And they have thrown it a lot on third and short too. Uh, Collins is the fullback. McCoy's the tailback. But it is McCoy who gets the call, and he's stopped in his tracks. I think he's a little bit short and a tough call for Dave Wanstead. Sends out yeah. the field goal unit. Wow. wow, that's a big defensive play for the Irish. What a stop of McCoy by the yeah. center of the Irish defense, led by their leader, Maurice Crum. Yeah, Maurice Crum and Pat Coons got in there low, but Crum, big play by Maurice. Connor Lee, who's made his two field goal attempts, now a 32-yarder to tie the game on its way and dead center. 
That's a pretty good kick in here. Yeah, we have seen some good kicking. Nothing but yeah. in overtime. So Connor Lee's field goal ties the game at 30. We're headed for a third overtime period. And we'll be back for the third overtime in 30 seconds. One, he was wide open. This one, he was well covered by two white jerseys. But he had, uh, Jimmy Clausen had him for a touch early on. Walker has made his two field goal attempts to keep the game headed into the third overtime. So here comes that uh, hog formation, the direct snap to the they've, running back. They've run eight plays, now nine, and McCoy's carried on eight of them. Yeah, that, that one actually, actually is the other Stevens guy. Stevens yeah. howling, that one. So Stevens howling, tackled by Robert Blanton. So uh, all the two plays now in overtime for Pitt have gone to McCoy, and why not? That time, Stevens howling getting the call as McCoy returns. Kerry Neal limps off. Darius Fleming, the freshman defensive end, got a start last week, comes on. Second down and nine. Ball start, that'll cost the Panthers five. Boy. Right tackle Joe Thomas, and maybe the noise created by the fans here at Notre Dame Stadium threw him off. Well, they're, they're away from the uh, the student section, but that one's not even close, and that's the eighth penalty of the year, uh, of the game. A team that averaged just three. Panthers now have their work cut out, second down, 14. Yeah, so Pat Bostic really has to be careful here with the ball. Can't take a sack, can't throw the interception. Being chased, screen pass, caught by McCoy. McCoy got a block, McCoy to the outside, McCoy down the sideline, finally forced <laughs> out of bounds. He is the real McCoy. <laughs> Unbelievable, isn't he? I thought he was going to get tackled for about a seven-yard loss. Instead, he gained 16. Ooh, a fun guy to watch. Did he come out of the crowd over there? Little screen pass. I tell you, Bostic held that to the very last moment. Pretty well read, but then to see kind of his speed. And uh, I don't think he actually came back onto the, onto the field, did he? He was over there in his band. One side to the, you never know exactly where LaShawn McCoy's going to go when he gets the ball in his hands. Well, he's on the sideline now. Stevens Howling is in at tailback. First down play, Howling, Stevens Howling. Two or three yards. Ryan Smith and Ian Williams on the Irish tackle. Pitt at the, about the 160-yard mark in rushing. I know some of this is coming overtime, but that's... That's a good number. It's a good running football team and a good offensive line. 147 of it by that man. Well, that's five in a row that he's had over 140 yards. Second down. The ball at the 11-yard line of the Irish in triple overtime. Stevens howling, looking for a seam. Finds a small one. And gets it to the nine. It'll bring up a third down as McCoy returns. Look at that helmet. You don't think he's going to battles inside? That's Pat Coots. Third down and six. Bostic, under pressure, throws for the end zone, way oh, overshoots oh. his man. Almost intercepted by David Brood. Really had a chance. Byam, the tight end, and way over his head. 
So here comes Connor Lee one more time. Good pressure by the Irish front four. They just went a late blitz by Brian Smith. Throwing off the back foot is Bostic. And lucky that David Bruton didn't get a, both hands on that one. This will be 27 yards for Connor Lee. Lee still perfect. Now the Irish now know exactly what they have to do, right? Touchdown would win it for Notre Dame. We're in triple overtime at Notre Dame Stadium. Lights are on. And the action continues with the Irish taking over possession of the football. Two wide receivers for Jimmy Clausen have caught passes for over 100 yards today. Tate 100, the Tate 111, Floyd at 100 in the 100 yard mark. 16 catches between them. Armando Allen on first down. Stuffed by the defense of the Panthers. Only one yard. Now that puts you in a bit of a hole. It, it, you know, we, it, both teams have played really good defense, but particularly in overtime have these two teams played good defense. Nothing but field goals. Yeah. McKillop made that pit tackle. How many tackles does he have on the day now? Yeah, McKillop is coming up on, uh, that's now 14, two of those tackles for losses. Second down and nine. Shotgun. Clawson has protection, but his pass, a misread with Allen behind him, and incomplete. And it's going to be third down. Yeah, this this is a, a delicate call for Charlie Weiss, right? Because if you get nothing here, it makes it a very long field goal attempt for your kicker, as good as he's been for in overtime. There he is, Brandon Walker. And now third down and nine from the 24-yard line. Tate wide to the top of the screen. Kamara's in the slot there. Floyd to the bottom. Fake to Allen. Clawson steps up under pressure oh, and sacked. With a three-man rush, Tom. A three-man rush. Greg Romeus makes this, his sack the fourth and a half of the year for Romeus. That's unbelievable. They just rushed three, dropped eight. All the way back to the 29-yard line. Yeah, Jimmy Clausen does a great job of hanging on to the football. This would be, what, a 30, 47-yard run? Brandon Walker to try to keep the game going into fourth overtime. This would equal his career-long 48 yards. Walker from 48. It's on its way, and it is... Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's a heck of a lot of fun. Dave Wallace, I can't believe it, but good for Brandon Walker. A guy who has absolutely persevered. Good snap by Kevin Brooks. Good hold as well. And cleared it. I won't say easily, but definitely cleared it. We're headed to the fourth overtime. Brandon Walker. I think that gives him a lift. This oh, is got to. the it's longest, got to. longest game in Notre Dame history. Yeah. I'll tell you, what a day for these two kickers. Brandon Walker has been just unreal, and Connor Lee has done his entire career. Ordinarily, you don't like a bunch of kickers deciding the game, but this is kind of yeah. fun, you know? All right, I mean, for the Irish, right back on offense now. No time uh, to celebrate too much. You could be called on again here shortly. The way the pit defense is played. Connor Lee, as we said, already graduated, uh, working on his MBA. Brother, a linebacker at Penn State. 
Tied at 33. Fourth overtime. We start again at the 25 with the Irish in possession. Aldrich is the tailback here. Here's James Aldrich. Found a little hole. Blasted through to the 20-yard line. Five yards on first down. Kill up in the, on that again. Austin Ransom on it as well. Kill up now has 15. Ransom with 10 and a half. The linebackers for the Panthers have really had a great afternoon. Ball just short of the 20. Second down and six. Aldridge again, but nowhere to go this time. Boy, penetration up front by the Panthers. Mick Williams was first to arrive on the scene. Aldridge lucky that he got a yard or two on the carry when it, he was hit in the backfield. Remember what Phil Bennett said to us about number 95, Mick Williams? He said, you know, he just he hasn't played much the last three weeks, and boy, have we missed him. And, uh, Mick Williams, just one of those really good inside players. The flashy guys are the defensive ends, but the real lunch bucket kind of guys Mick Williams play inside he plays it pretty well third down and five last time they got the Jimmy Clausen with a three-man rush you see the three we will see just three defensive linemen coming again shotgun Clausen rifles it and it's caught no no incomplete Tate had it for a moment and they're going after it as if it were a fumble but the hit I think this lodged the football by Barry. Hey, how about Pitt's defense, Tom? After it, last week they gave up, what was it, 56 points, was it, to Rutgers? They, they have really played some tough defense today, particularly in overtime, particularly in this fourth quarter. Barry able to break that one up. Good defense again by the Panthers. Here's the field goal attempt by Brandon Walker, 38 yards. Needs to get off in 1.4 seconds or less. This one is no good. So the Irish luck ran out for Brandon Walker as he misses the field goal. Let's go. Boy, that's got to change Dave Wanstad's play calling. I think he knows, don't you think, with a kicker as good as his? I say McCoy yeah. three times and kick let her rip. I, you know, maybe not even three times. Yes. I would just give it to McCoy or maybe even you know, Stevens Howling. He's never had ball security problems. But you know what? That, that's not all just on Brandon Walker. The offense did, did get the ball in the end zone in overtime when they needed it. It's not just his fault. And in four tries, they haven't gotten it in. Yeah, indeed. Give Pittsburgh's defense credit. And Absolutely. the Irish have done the same uh -huh. pending this fourth overtime. So the trouble is now only a field goal to beat you. And they're already in field goal range for Connolly. Bostic to McCoy. Line of scrimmage twisted down by down by Ian Williams. And LaShawn McCoy just has to make sure that he holds on to the football. And a couple of fumbles earlier in the year, a few last year as well. This is the time where you don't worry about the 50-yard run or even the 25-yard run at this point. Just hang on to the ball, get what you can. Just inside the Irish 25. Second down and nine. McCoy breaking free for a moment. Makes another cut. Here's McCoy inside the 10 and pushed out of bounds at about the six yard line by David Bruton, an 18 yard gain. And now it's a chip shot field goal. Yeah, but I think don't you take one snap and get the ball in the middle of the field? Absolutely. Yeah. Or actually, you do what you do. And you see that the moves, the vision, the power, and the way he hangs on the ball at the end of the run. Now, that's a smart, smart play. And I think what you, you know, your head coaches know where the kicker likes the ball. You like in the left hash, you like in the middle of the field. And wherever Connor Lee likes it, I think you're going to see Pat Bostic just kind of run to that spot and get down. It'll be McCoy that'll run. And we'll make it just short of the five-yard line. Here comes the field goal team. 
What a day for LaShawn McCoy. Got off to a slow start, but boy, did he finish strong. My goodness. So it should be an easy one for Connor Lee, who's been nearly automatic. But take nothing for granted, of course, in this crazy game. But Connor Lee to win it in the fourth overtime. And Notre Dame will try to ice him as they call timeout before he attempts the 23-yard field goal. Connor Lee, fifth-year senior from Upper St. Clair, Pennsylvania. Graduated major business economics in graduate school now. It's Brandon Walker from 38 yards for Notre Dame. And a push to never quite booked back in. Nope. Straight, barely past that left upright. So here now, Connor Lee lining up. He's four for four in field goal attempts today. 23 yards to win the game. It is. Dave Wonstad and the Pittsburgh Panthers now 4-0 on the road this season as they come into Notre Dame Stadium in the longest game ever played here. And they win in the fourth overtime. Brandon Walker's 38-yard attempt goes wide. Connor Lee hits it from 23. And he's the hero of the moment, sharing the laurels with the Pittsburgh defense and with running back LaShawn McCoy today. Big win for the Panthers as they win it in four overtimes, 36-33. We'll be back in 30 seconds to hear from Coach Weiss and others in the Vonage postgame report.